Hey, what's going on everybody? I wanted to hop on here a little bit early to get my um, audio tested. So if you're in the room waiting, can you let me know if my audio is working? Um, I got a new iPhone and I've had some difficulties with audio. You probably noticed in some of my videos, my audio is not as good as it normally is. And that's because um, the new iPhones have a little bit of weird stuff going on with uh, with the Rode my Video Mic Pro. So I'm trying to, uh, to figure that out. But let me know if you can hear me right now um, in the comments so I know that at least the audio is good to go. Hey Jeff, long time no see man. Good to see you in here. Thanks for stopping by. You can hear me, all right. Is it like good audio? Is, is my voice clear? There's a little, um, there's a little uh, fountain here. It's actually really rainy, so I found this little cubby hole that's covered out here uh, next to this fountain. So the fountain's probably gonna be a little bit noisy, but that's okay. Um, but hopefully uh, the audio is good. Hey, Andrew, what's going on? Nikki Howard's in the house. A lot of familiar names. It's awesome to see all you guys in here. Um, Don Mann, CC from Connecticut, Harsha. Um, before I jump into saying good morning to everybody, um, Sin Lee, Laura Jackson. Uh, before I, I jump into saying good morning, everybody, let me let, let you know what's going on for those of you who haven't watched my last few videos. So 10 days ago, I left on a cruise on Ruby Princess. I'll be on here 103 days total. So I just did 10 days. I have 93 days remaining. Um, the reason I did that, uh, normally, if you remember from my cruising before, I would change cruise ships every so often, but I found a cruise ship that, that had a very varied, a very varied itinerary. Um, this ship will, is doing about 30 days in the Caribbean and uh, Central America, and then we're going to head through the Panama Canal, do a Panama Canal transit, hit a bunch of places in Central America, and then we're gonna do a California wine cruise up the California coast, or actually all the way up to like Seattle, up the west coast. And then we head over to Hawaii. Um, and then we come back and we finish with, um, with uh, Alaska cruising. I'll be doing three, cru three seven day cruises back to back in Alaska. But I'll be on this ship a total of 103 days. I have 93 days left. So that's what I'm doing right now. Um, and today is a new cruise. Uh, it's a bunch of separate cruises. It's not one big long like 103 day world cruise. I booked a bunch of cruises separately uh, to make this happen. And after that, I'm gonna hop on a plane and I'm gonna go to Asia and I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start doing some of the 30 and a wake up stuff where I live in a country like 30 to 60 days and then move on to the next country. And I'll hop on some cruise ships along the way there's a couple of cruises i really want to do i want to do japanese island cruises i want to do the cruise that runs out of singapore that hits a bunch of places like bali places like that so there'll be it'll be kind of a mix of cruising plus uh living in different countries and um, i'm going to start in asia but i'm going to do some europe european countries some middle eastern countries show you the cost of living in those places for like a month or two and uh, so that's the plan for the channel at the moment. Now, things are always subject to change, but uh, that's, that's my plan, my current plans. So this is a Q&A, so if you have any questions, throw them out there. If you can put a bunch of question marks in front of it first, just put like, you know, three or four question marks, and then I'll know it's a question. Um, and I'm on my iPhone, so it's hard for me to scroll back and look at older questions. So if I miss your question, um, be sure to ask it again. So KAK17 says, good morning. Um, how did you book all these cruises? Did you use a travel agent? So I've never used a travel agent for booking cruises. I just kind of, I get a lot of enjoyment out of the like hunting for different things. I hadn't planned on coming back on Ruby Princess, but as I was looking at the ship's itinerary, I was like, okay, this is great. It's a, it's a varied itinerary. I won't be doing the same cruise over and over again and I just jumped on board and booked it myself. I did go on a cruise with my mother 
about two months ago, we took a transatlantic cruise from Rome to the U.S. And um, I had already booked about uh, I already booked about 30 days of this cruise. And so I went to, to the cruise desk and they helped me make sure I was in the same room for that entire 30 days. And then um, I booked another 60 something days and they made sure I was in the same room for those 60 days. So I just left a stateroom, a cabin. I was in a cabin for 10 days. This cabin I'm in for 34 days and the next cabin I'm in for 59 days. And so future cruises actually helped me make sure all of those were in the same cabin. They originally weren't, because that's kind of hard to do when you're booking on Princess's website. So I probably could have used a travel agent for that, but um, but I, I ended up not needing a travel agent. I just booked it all myself, and then I used future cruises to keep me in the same cabin, So, uh, which I prefer. And they're all inside cabins. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I normally cruise inside cabins, which is fine for me. Uh, this cruise I'm taking cruise, cruising for one's advice and I had them split my bed from a from a king size bed into two separate beds and I'm going to try that he says he loves it it gives him a lot more space and he can use one bed it's kind of like a storage kind of little area so I'm excited about that I saw I got a super chat here so let me run, run up and acknowledge that thank you Sin Lee for the uh, super chat I really appreciate it you didn't have a question in the super chat but um, if you have a question just throw it out there and again, if I miss your question, it's because I'm on my iPhone. And hey, Life's the Beach is in the house. What's going on? How are you doing? Um, oh, TJ says, uh, hello from Chile, Ohio. Yeah, I was in Missouri for the last like five months other than taking my mo mother to Venice and it was freezing cold and it's freezing cold there right now. Uh, here's a question from Don. Uh, is it getting more challenging to book as a solo traveler? I haven't found it more challenging, but I will be honest with you. So I've told this story a million times. I went on, when I started cruising, I went down the casino because you guys asked me to film the casino. I put 50 bucks into a slot machine and I lost it in about two seconds. At the end of that cruise, they gave me like $150 uh, casino credit for my next cruise. And so I went down there. I put all of that into the I, I lost it all and then uh, no, actually I didn't lose it all I actually won a little jackpot it was like 1400 bucks or something like that and I ran into para DJ some of you probably watch her YouTube channel and they said hey <coughs> we cruise for free because we spent a lot of time in the casino and you know this isn't advice but you should just go pump that money back in and remember this was a time when right after COVID when they were trying to get people to come cruising so I did I just lost that 1400 bucks so I'm really down 50 bucks but I have received free cruises ever since then. And I'm still getting them. And I get onboard credit and I'll go and I'll use the onboard credit and then I'll win some and then I'll pump that money back into it. And I just keep getting free cruises. Now they're not completely free. I have to pay the taxes and port fees and I have to put a $200 deposit down, but they put that as onboard credit once you get on board. So you kind of get that back. So what I do is I use whatever casino credit I get and that 200 dollars onboard credit and I pump it back in a casino and I just gotten free cruises ever since I started doing that so my cruises really cost when you when you factor in all the money I just told you they cost around 40 to 50 dollars a night so for a month of cruising it's costing me about fifteen hundred dollars and I don't get any packages other than uh, Wi-Fi but I'm elite on here so I get 50 percent off my Wi-Fi package uh, that's the only thing I buy separately. Uh, I mean, occasionally a coffee and things like that. But um, uh, so the cruises don't really cost me anything. I also am retired military, so I get an onboard credit of usually between 100 to uh, $250. And I, um, I also always buy a future cruise credit, so I get anywhere from $15 to $100, I think, or $150 depending on the length of my cruise onboard credit. So I usually have a ton of onboard credit. So that actually pays for the gratuities as well. And I usually have a lot left over for buying other things. It, it covers my internet and some other things. So uh, so cruising right now is costing me about 1500 bucks, but it's because of those casino deals that I keep getting. Whenever you get an email from Princess with a casino deal, you can book three cruises on it. And I get those emails all the time. 
So I booked all of these cruises that I'm on right now, which is like 10 separate cruises. I booked them all uh, for zero dollars, except for, like I mentioned, uh, port fees, taxes, and uh, gratuities, and uh, the $200 deposit. Um, this one actually was a little bit more expensive because we're doing a lot of Panama Canal transiting in and out of the Panama Canal. So the port fees are a lot more expensive. I think my port fees and taxes for this cruise are like $700. So the, the next like two or three cruises, it's a little bit more expensive. Later on, it'll get much cheaper because the port fees and taxes will be a lot less. All right, I've seen a lot of questions. I'm sorry if I missed them. If I, if I don't scroll back to where you are, please ask your question again. Um, o asked a question. On a 103-day cruise, are any of the stop are any of the stops places you visited in the past? If so, which ones are you most looking forward to? So, uh, we are going to. Uh, I always mess up the Hispanic way of saying this: Watako, Watako, Mexico, and it's just this beautiful, like sleepy little town. When you do a when you do a Panama Canal cruise on Princess, and I'm sure on other cruise lines. You probably go there. It starts with an H, but it's pronounced like W, Watako, Watolko, Hotoko, Watoko, something like that. Um, I'm excited about going back there again. I lived in Hawaii for 10 years, so I'm really excited about returning to Hawaii. We're doing four ports in Hawaii, four different islands, I believe. Um, and then um, I'm really excited about Alaska. I did Alaskan cruise like seven years ago or something. So I'm excited about uh, returning to like Ketchikan and those kind of places in Alaska. So I will be repeating some ports. I'm also doing a Caribbean cruise, not this cruise, but I think the next one, maybe the one after that. And it's a bunch of the saints like St. Lucia, St. Martinique, and I'm excited about those. I always like all the saints, <laughs> St. John, St. Martin, all those places. So I'm, I'm excited about those. Thanks for the question. Uh, if you have a question, throw it out there. Uh, Dave B says, good eye from Bangkok. I will be in Bangkok in May. I'm uh, coming, I'll probably be in Thailand for two, maybe three months. I'm getting a bunch of dental work done um, the first month. I'm gonna bring back my youthful smile and it's just much cheaper to do there. You know, people know I drink a lot of tea and coffee, so, um, and I need some crowns. I'm gonna get veneers. Uh, I'll document all that, I know. There's a lot of vanity to do with it, but I have the money. It's pretty affordable in Thailand, so I'll be in Bangkok for a month, probably two months in Bangkok, and then maybe another month somewhere else. I have to renew my driver's license. Uh, so I'll probably go down to Jam Tien to renew my driver's license. So I'll be in Bangkok probably two months, a month to get my dental work done, and then another month I'm gonna stay at this place called True Digital Park. We got 100 people in here, I can't believe that. I figured I only have like 10 people since I've been gone so long. But if you haven't smashed that like button, I'd appreciate it and it'll get more people in here. But yeah, uh, I'm excited to hear about your adventure in Southeast Asia. Yeah, so I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna be in Thailand. I'm gonna go to Malaysia, probably both KL and, um, and Penang. I'm gonna live in each of those spots for a month, do extensive cost of living analysis so you understand what it costs to do this. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna be meticulous about tracking that when I do that this time. I'm gonna do B, BGC in the Philippines. I'm really excited about that. I've been watching a bunch of people uh, that have been there. Um, I'm going to do uh, Vietnam, probably Singapore. I wanna show a cost of living in Singapore. You don't see that many of those because it's a little bit more on the expensive side. I'm gonna spend more than I did before. Um, I've done really well with investments the last two years so I can kind of up my, how much I spend a month. So I'm probably gonna be spending anywhere from 800 to 1500 a month on lodging, which is still cheap for a lot of people, but in Asia, it's really, that's a lot of money. So I'll, I'll be living in more upscale places, but I, I still think I'll be able to keep my monthly expenses to two to 3,000 a month. Um, but we'll talk more about that in the future. I should have put this camera on the other side so you don't have to see my finger all the time when I'm scrolling. Uh, which is cheaper, cruising or international countries? I'd say, to be honest with you, if you can get these casino deals on Princess, to be honest, they're about the same uh, cost. 
if I'm being completely honest with you, they're, they're um, I mean, I'm doing cruising right now on $1,500 a month. Uh, you could probably do cruising, uh, you could probably cruise full time. You don't get the casino deals. You use Cruise Plum to find your cruises. If you haven't seen my video on how to find cost-effective cruises, go ahead and look for that. Um, it's in my it's in my last 10 videos or something like that. But you can definitely do that for 3,000 a month, probably less if you stick with cruise lines like MSC and uh, Princess that are a little bit more solo cost uh, friendly. Um, and then when you're overseas, it depends on what you want. I mean, when I was overseas, but it was during COVID, I mean, I could easily live like a king in Chiang Mai because I could rent a $300 apartment in Chiang Mai in a modern building and, um, you know, th after, you know, $300 and still spend $1,000 a month on food, you know, 500 a month on, you know, going and doing fun things. And I was still under 2000 a month. So to me, they're about, they're about the same, to be honest with you. But KK47 says, do I need a travel sidekick? I mean, I'm always looking for a travel sidekick. Um, you know, you never know what's going to happen to you in your life. What cruise am I on? I'm on Princess. I'm on the Ruby Princess right now, might be. Uh, doing a 103-day cruise. Uh, I'm going to repeat myself a lot in here because people are going to be filing in and out. But I'm doing a 103-day cruise. Um, about th a little bit over 30 days in the Caribbean and South America, Central, mostly Central America, going into the Panama Canal and back out again. I'm gonna do that three times. And a, a lot of Caribbean, all the saints. And then we're gonna head through the Panama Canal fully, uh, go around to the West Coast, go all the way up the West Coast, California, uh, Oregon, uh, Seattle, Vancouver, doing a, um, a West Coast wine cruise. And then we're going to head over to Hawaii. And then we're going to head over and do, uh, we're going to come back and do a lap, 21 days of an Alaskan cruise. So I'm all excited about all those things. It's going to, it's very varied itineraries. I'm super excited about that. I'm in the Caribbean now where it's nice and warm. Everyone's freezing back in Missouri in the Midwest. Um, that's where I came from. It was freezing. When I left, actually, it wasn't too bad. It was about 50 or 60 degrees. But we had had that freezing weather. But yeah. Again, if I miss your question, please ask it again, because uh, I'm on my iPhone. And if you put those question marks in front of it, I'll know it's a question. Uh, all good, can hear the fountain, but uh, can hear you just fine, great. Uh, in New Zealand, what's going on, Jane? You're in New Zealand. I'm gonna hit, probably hit up New Zealand this year. Uh, Maxine's in the house. Hey, Kevin, it's great to see you live, but hopefully be back approximately 45 55 minutes. Yeah, I, I should, I'll probably still be on. You know how my live streams are. They last a long time. Any plans to retire in Thailand? Yeah, at some point, I have a 20-year visa, Alaska John, in Thailand. So Thailand's one of those places, at least for a half a year, a year probably at some point. Did you go on the Fire and Ice Cruise and will we see any videos? Yeah, I did. Got a bunch of videos from the Fire and Ice Cruise uh, back in my past. Uh, what kind of iPhone are you using? iPhone 15 Pro. Uh, I upgraded from my iPhone 12. Uh, will you be on Sun Princess? I had booked Sun Princess, but it got canceled, so I just that's when I booked this cruise. Uh, they had to move the cruise dates around, and so yeah, at some point, hopefully, I'll be on Sun Princess, but I don't know when. Life's a beach. If you have a question, ask it again, pop it up there. I'm all caught up. This is your cruise director, Jacqueline. Sorry, the cruise yeah, director's talking. For an important safety announcement. You may be familiar with safety muster bills aboard ships, but our new safety essentials is different from what you may have encountered before, so I ask that you please pay attention to this announcement. Yeah, Lackey says uh, they're doing our Carnival Cruising. Yeah, so Carnival owns steps. Princess, so it's they a very similar cruise First, type of thing. If you've not already done so, please Can you hear the announcement in the background? As as is it drowning me out? You're not required to bring a life jacket, but all guests are required to scan their own medallion. The picture is so clear. Yeah, in I'm in, um, right we're in Fort Lauderdale, so I'm on my 5G, you know, T-Mobile 5G. It's a little bit rainy out here. It's a little bit rainy out here today. I'm up here on the top deck. 
Lastly, just before the parking show you today, the pool. The captain will make an announcement followed by the sounding of the general emergency do, alarm. Do, do. It's very important. LV has been a member for 22 months. Familiarize yourself for all you members that stuck with me, thank you. <laughs> I know I was gone a long time. I do that sometimes. I disappear and then I just come back. Also, if you have luggage, Mike D says, "Welcome back, buddy." What's going on, Mike D? In the Michelangelo dining room for safekeeping. Thank you. You taught me about van life, minimalism, one bag travel, fire, dividend aristocrats, Thailand, and now cruise life. Most importantly, cow soy. Yeah, that's awesome, man. That's cool, man. That you found all that on my channel, man. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm gonna go to some interesting places this year too and live, live that nomad life. Okay, good, you can hear me when I talk. Okay, good, good. That's good to know, because they'll be doing that a bunch. Uh, LV says, miss you lots, Kevin. Hugs from Rhode Island. What's going on, LV? You still got my uh, bumblebee gloves? Uh, Matt says, is it difficult to pack as minimally as you normally do such a wide range of temperatures? Yeah, so I got a bunch of long sleeve. I have like three long sleeve shirts, because I know I'm going to Alaska. Two of them are really cheap from Amazon and I'll just ditch them when I head over to Asia. This one I'll keep because it's a merino wool one. And you just layer, and it's pretty easy. I have one pair of pants, they're like a Lululemon type of travel pant that work really well. And then I have one pair of sweatpants. And I usually just wear those for flying. Um, so I'm, for me, that's enough uh, to get by. Um, I'm still traveling, carry on only, but I have a roller suitcase now. You can actually see it in my in my description. This company, I need to do a review of it. I really like it. This company sent me this and told me I didn't even have to do a review. They told me to just, you know, if I like it, put it in my my thing. And I, I used it for the last year and I really like it, so I'm gonna put it in there. But it's just a small clamshell, hard shell. Um, and it works on American carry-on. We'll see how it works when I go to Asia. They usually have a smaller footprint, which is fine. If I have to check it, I'll check it. But uh, it's worked for me so far. It gives me a lot more space than I had before. And I'm, I'm traveling with a lot less camera equipment now. I'm only filming everything with my iPhone. I don't have my computer anymore. I have an iPad. I bought an iPad Pro. And I'm editing on Final Cut Pro for iPad, which has been a learning experience which is why my videos that I put out the last three don't have all the cool stuff that my other videos, including my intro, because um, the iPad Final Cut Pro uh, editing software doesn't um, support that stuff yet, but it's, it's made life a lot easier for me because uh, all I have to carry is this little bag here that holds my iPad. My iPad's actually in here, and then my roll-on my roll carry-on. If they check it, that's fine. I've got all my all my electronics and everything in this little bag right here and my my uh, passport and everything and so um, so I, I actually have too much space in that bag which is fine uh, and I just like I said I bought a couple shirt long sleeve shirts that I know I'll just pitch at the end of the cruising in Alaska I won't bring that stuff to Asia I also brought a jacket that I bought on Amazon for like 20 bucks and I'll just ditch that too and I'll give it away or, I'll, you know, whatever. My stateroom st steward, my last stateroom steward can decide if they want to keep it or pitch it. Um, but it's only like 20 bucks, you know. And a lot of times what I'll do on these cruise ships, since I get so much onboard credit, they sell jackets in the, in the shops on board. A lot of times I'll just get a jacket in there and then ditch it at the end of the cruise. Uh, Mike says, because of you, we now tried 30 days. We did 60 days in Thailand, but there's so much to see. Uh, our next is Japan for 30 days. Man, I love that, man, that you guys are out there doing that. My wife is a beach lifer, No so thanks to you and Thai beaches. Man, that is just awesome, Mike. I'm so happy to hear that, man, that you're doing that. You have to, we'll have to swap notes, man. Uh, LB says, I have the bumblebee gloves. Uh, next time you disappear for a while, let us know. I did, but it's in the, it's in the channel. Um, there's a channel message board, and I know a lot of you might not see that, but I put it in the channel message board and so, I'm sorry if you didn't see that. Uh, stuck in Florida has been a member for 30 months, man. I can't believe you guys stuck with me. Hey, Chris Van Dunk's in the house. What's going on, man? Uh, any views on unbound travel pants yet? 
so I should do a review on them. I don't pack them anymore. I just, I, I don't like them as much as I like. They're, they're fine, but I don't like them as much as I like the Lululemon travel pants. They're just, um, uh, the material is just better. Merino wool is really, um, it's really great for your top, but for your bottom, it's really easy to get it snagged. And um, I don't like to cut very much. You might like them. Um, I don't personally like them, so I don't, that's why I don't talk about them or put any links to that kind of stuff or recommend them. I think some people will like them. I didn't hate them, I, I, uh, but I just like my Lululemon pants more, which I already had. If I would have got the Merino wool pants first, I'm about Merino pants first, I probably would have just stuck with them. But because I had the Lululemon, um, what are they called? I think, I don't, they're not the ABC ones or the other ones. I think they might have discontinued them and now they just have the ABC. They were the other ones that are a little bit more dressy. Uh, ABC pants are a little bit more like jean cut where the ones I have are more cut like slacks. Um, so they worked well for like formal night on the ship. Although I didn't bring a sport coat this time so I'm not doing any formal nights uh, on board. But um, yeah, where are you right now? We're in um, Fort Lauderdale. I'll give you guys a quick rundown. I'll try to make this brief so I'm not repeating myself to other people on here. There's 114 people on. If you don't mind smashing that thumbs up, I'd appreciate it. It helps more people find it. Uh, my new iPad, I believe, has the M2 chip. It's whatever the newest iPad Pro is. It isn't the one that's about to come out, but it's whatever the new one was. Um, so here's what I'm doing right now. I'm on a 103-day cruise. I just did 10 days of it. About a little bit, about 30 days left in the Caribbean and Central America. We keep going in and out of the Panama Canal. Uh, and then in about 30 days, we'll transit the Panama Canal. We'll go up the West Coast and do a, um, a West Coast wine cruise up through uh, California, Oregon, Washington State up to Vancouver. Then we'll go from Vancouver to Hawaii. I believe it's Vancouver to Hawaii. It might be San Francisco to Hawaii, I can't remember. Uh, but we'll do a Hawaiian cruise. Then we'll come back to Vancouver and do 21 days of Alaskan cruising. And then I'm gonna hop on a plane to Thailand where I'll be in Bangkok for 30 days, getting some dental work done, getting some crowns and veneers to bring back my youthful, um, pearly white smile after all my years of abuse, drinking coffee and tea. Uh, I'm gonna, I'll probably document that so you know what it costs to do like full veneers and crowns in, uh, in Thailand. I think that might be interesting to people. It's gonna be about half the price it is in the United States. Uh, and my, do my my doctors are all U.S. trained uh, dental dentists, so I'm excited about it. And then I'll probably spend another 30 days in Bangkok at this place called Two, True Digital Park, which I think is a really cool, like live, work, uh, play kind of place. And then uh, I'll probably go to Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur, and Penang, and then to Singapore probably, and then probably to Vietnam maybe to uh, and then go over to the Philippines. I really want to try this place called BGC Philippines. I've been watching these two families over there. Um, one's called Mom Duty. Uh, it's, Ameri it's American families that moved over to BGC Philippines. One's called Mom Duty and the other's called like a ABC Always Be Changing Philippines. I think they have a bigger YouTube channel called Always Be Changing. And it's just, they've really sold me on BGC Philippines, and so I'm gonna try that. All right, again, if I missed your question, please ask it again. Uh, we watched your San Juan video last night in St. Martin's just now, great content. Yeah, that's why I just did this. Uh, so those videos are actually doing really well. They don't do well initially when you put them out, but they have a they are, they have a long shelf life. My my highest earning video last month was my San Juan Port vi vi video, which just kind of shocked me. Uh, I made that a while back, so I'm gonna start doing those port videos where I just walk off the ship and find something to do instead of taking excursions. I just put one out for Limon, Costa Rica, and it didn't do very well. It's my worst performing video of the three I put out since I started cruising or filming again. But those videos seem to do good long term, uh, and I enjoy doing them. So I'm going to I'm going to keep doing the port visits. San Juan's one of my favorite places. It's the to me it's the best walk off port in the Caribbean. 
for just walking off and going and doing some really cool things, getting some really cool food. Uh, someone just asked me, would Niman be a good spot? Yeah, I think Niman is still a good spot. You can get some really cool rentals there. But Old Town is actually really cool too. That's where I used to always walk to and film my videos. Um, there's a lot more to do in Old Town. Neiman is still good because you're right next to Maya Mall. And there's that one Neiman there as well. So if I was going to go back, I'd probably live in Neiman. But also old, look at Old Town too. I think it's really cool to live in. You ever watch Sailing La Vagabonds? I think I've run across them before. I wouldn't say I've watched a ton of their videos, but I have run across them, I'm sure. Um, that name sounds really familiar. This channel, for those who used to watch this channel a long time ago, uh, used to be called um, Kevin Vagabond. That was, I think that was the very first name of this channel, Kevin Vagabond. It's had a couple different names. I have to stick with 30 to wake up now because I'm verified. I have that little check mark now that you get when you go over 100,000 subscribers and you get verified. If you change your name, you lose your check mark. So I won't be changing it now, even though my name doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, although it's gonna start making sense again when I start short-term traveling again. Um, but my channel's so much more than that now. I thought about making separate channels. I'm watching this cruise channel. I think they're called, um, oh God, what's her name? I can't remember. They have four. They have one travel channel that's that's got a lot of subscribers. It's got like 155,000 subscribers, and then they have a channel that's um, about finances, and then they have a channel about cruising, and then they have a channel about Asia. They have a bunch of different channels. I've really been watching a lot of their videos lately because they kind of do what I do. They cruise sometimes. They um, live in different countries a lot. They traveled on Amtrak, which is something I want to do all over the United States. They they use travel points to like fly. They've got some really good travel hacks for hotels, which I'm going to try out. I just got the IGC, I believe is what it's called, IGC or IHG, IHG maybe, um, Chase credit card. And I'm going to try to stay in a bunch of IHGs at a month at a time. Um, and I'll document all that but I'll also be using Airbnb, but I'm gonna do a combination of IHG and Airbnb. Cause some places you can actually stay in IHG resorts for cheaper than you can stay Airbnb. I'm trying to remember the name of their site. I hate, I hate that I don't remember their channel. It's called Global Something, and then it'll, it'll be like Global Something Travel, Global Something Asia, Global Something Finances. And they're, it's just really cool couple. They just hit 50 years old, they've been doing this the same amount of time I've been doing it, which is also neat. Uh, grounded for life, yeah, that's it, I think. Um, yeah, it's grounded, not global. Maybe it's grounded for life, finances, grounded for life. That's it, it's grounded for life. They're really, I really like their channel. And their finance channel, which is only about 8,000 subscribers, is so detailed, it's really good. Yeah, IHG gives you one night free for every four nights you stay, and you can stack it. So if you stay four nights, you get one night free. If you stay eight nights, you get two nights free. If you stay 12 nights, you get three nights free, and so on and so on. So if you stay 40 nights, you get 10 nights for free. So basically it's 25% off what you would pay for a month and um, for over a month. And if you purchase points, you use the points, which is cheaper than the cash rate. And so really you're getting like 40 to 50% off so you can stay in like a, a resort hotel for $1,100 a month, which is a pretty good deal. I mean, it's not $300 a month, you know, like I've stayed in a lot, you know, I've, during COVID I could stay on the beach with a beautiful beach view for $300. Those deals are pretty much gone now, those on the beach kind of views. You're more in the, in the $800 to $1,200 range, but yeah. Man, I can't believe I have 130 people in here. Thank you so much for uh, showing up and, uh, and, and uh, sticking with me through all, I've done this many times, you know, you guys know I've switched genres many times. I, you know, I, I traveled and lived in a different country every 30 days and then I went 
and did van life, which is where I got most of my audience. And then I went and did, um, I went and lived over in Thailand for a year and didn't make a ton of videos, but did a lot of live streams. And then I started cruising, started doing videos. So I have this whole, I have this cruise audience now. So I have a bunch of different segmented audiences. And I just really appreciate all you guys for sticking with me. I, I can't tell you how much it means to me. I really enjoy uh, doing this YouTube. I mean, there's a financial benefit to it, but more, more for me, it's more about documenting uh, my experiences, but also the connections I make with people like LV who's on here, like Mike D that's on here. I just met a guy named Scott on this cruise and we sat down and talked uh, my lifestyle. He's, he's, uh, he retires in four years and he wants to do something similar and it was just really cool to share knowledge with him and, and talk to him. It's very social, it's a social outlet for me, especially cruising. Other ways I've traveled, I, I don't usually run into people on the street that watch my channel, but on cruising, since it's such a confined space with, you know, you see everybody, uh, maybe every cruise I do, 10, 15 people come up and say, hey, I watch your YouTube channel, and some of them wanna talk and, and chat, and for me, an introvert that's pretty shy, uh, uh, it opens me up a little bit and gets me talking to people and hanging out with people and going to dinner with people. Andrea Gold's on here who invited me to go to dinner with her and her friends when she was on board. So I, you know, I did something I normally don't do. I went to the main dining room at night on there, which was a great experience. Um, just met great people on uh, uh, cruising and, and traveling. And it helps me be a little bit more social. When I was in Thailand, I would hook up with all the Thailand YouTube community over there. And that was great as well. And so um, uh, I don't, like whenever I don't make videos on my channel, I don't make that much money. So, and then it takes me a while to build my channel up to make a decent amount of money. So it's really not about that. It's great, the money's great. It's a little bit extra uh, money to, to supplement the cost of travel. But uh, it's really about like you guys. So I really appreciate you guys sticking with me. Um, and you guys who stuck with me, like Rich L here, as members, channel members, like paying a monthly fee, like I, I, I really appreciate that. Like you have no idea. Uh, you met a girl. I was dating for a while when I was back in Missouri. Ended up not working out. Um, but I, I don't really involve my personal life on here. I'm not dating anyone at the moment. Uh, usually when I travel, it's hard to date, so I don't date. But I hope to see you when I go on my Hawaii cruise. Are you on Ruby Princess for your Hawaii cruise, Rex? Or on a different cruise line? Uh, changing genres affect your revenue. Does one make more money versus another? Yeah, if I wanted to make a lot of money, I would stick with van life. I, I mean, I made upwards of $10,000 a month do, uh, doing van life. I make a ton more money in that genre. Now, it might not make as much now. That was during COVID, so a lot of people were watching van life. Um, it might not make as much now. Um, my second most profitable genre is cruising uh, because cruise lines just advertise like crazy on cruise videos and there's not a lot of quality cruise content out there. Uh, there's some really good stuff. There is some quality stuff, but there's not a whole lot of channels. Um, I mean, there's probably, there's probably 10 channels that over, have over 100,000 subscribers. So when I jump into that genre, I bring that 100,000 subscribers with me already. I, I think I had, when I started cruising, I think I had 80,000 subscribers. Um, but by far, if I, was, if I was out for money, I would, I, would, um, I would do van life. My least profitable is traveling internationally because number one, it's very competitive. There are, mil there are probably millions of, tr of travel vloggers out there making the same stuff, you know, Thailand, Chiang Mai, you know, Vietnam, uh, all those places. Um, so, and also you're, it's just, it's just not something that people advertise on, pay a lot of money to advertise on. Van life, the like van dealers pay a ton of money because think about this, if you're paying to advertise, if, if, you're, if you're advertising your vans, like your Winnebago Travado, 
on YouTube channels and you're, you, maybe you do an ad campaign that costs a thousand bucks, you sell one Winnebago Travato, that's $120,000. So all you need to sell is one, right? If you're a suitcase brand and you're paying thousands of dollars to advertise on YouTube, you gotta sell a ton of suitcases, right? So, and it's the same with cruising, right? Um, cruisers will advertise on top of these um, travel or these YouTube videos because they they can they'll sell cruises that way that are you know high I don't know high profit sales so it's just a it's a um, uh, it's more profitable so yeah if I wanted to maximize how much money I make I would go back to van life that's where I make the most money I make up upwards of ten thousand dollars a month uh, doing van life. So I make ton, like a ton more money. And just to give you the disparity, when I do cruising videos, I may, I may make $2,000 a month. And when I do travel videos overseas, maybe 500 to 1,000 a month. And don't, any money is great, but I make a ton more money doing van life. Now if my cruise videos start getting more views, I'll make more money doing van, uh, cruise videos. I just make, I get a lot more views in van life too, which, makes you more money. Hey, I'm a new sub, uh, be joining for Hawaii. Excited to go through the countdown via your videos. That's awesome. I'm excited, I'm so excited about Hawaii. I lived in Hawaii for 10 years in the military. I was stationed there for 10 years. And so it's kind of a home away from home for me. Lieutenant Dave's on here. Uh, Rex is on Norwegian. Well, maybe we'll, Hit the same port. If you see Ruby Princess, that's that's me. Um, if I missed your question, please ask it again. Elvie says, I love your Amtrak videos. Yeah, I definitely want to do that. They say finance videos saying how much they make and they're making 18K a month on theirs. Yeah, finance videos are real is a is a good genre too. IH, IHG gives you uh, oh yeah, yeah, they said they're making you're saying their finance channel, they make 18K. Yeah, they're very active. And if you go back and look at their channel, their Amtrak videos are super popular and they probably get a lot of residuals from that. Like I make my most money off older videos. Um, although last month, my highest grossing video was my San Juan, Puerto Rico port visit video. Uh, Andrew said, hi and bye, I've been listening in the car. My son got married. Oh, that's amazing. Congratulations to you and your son. Do you, does your channel get many trolls? So I haven't got a ton of trolls um, doing cruising, but I used to get a ton of trolls in Thailand especially, and then a, and then a lot in van life too. Besides the profitability, what do you enjoy most about making YouTube videos? I kind of talked about that a minute ago. I don't know if you heard it. I, I, I enjoy the creative process of it. The video editing is actually fun, especially now that I can do it on my iPad with my, my Apple Pencil. It's like so much easier than it used to be. My videos aren't as cool. There's not as much as cool things going on with them, but it's much less time consuming and a little bit more enjoyable. I can also do the writing thing. Like if you watch my videos, you'll see me write, like subscribe and and uh, that's my handwriting. I have terrible handwriting, but you, I can overlay it. So it's behind me, which I think looks really cool. And that used to be really hard to do, uh, but on iPad, it's really easy to do. Um, but yeah, and then I mentioned earlier, just the, uh, the connections I've made on here with people over the time over the time I've been doing this, like Andrea's on here, LV's on here, um, just a ton of people uh, that I've met in real life. Uh, a bunch of people in Thailand, obviously, uh, when I was over there, and yeah, it's been great. Van life, I obviously met a ton of people. Story chasing, um, ton of people when I did van life. Um, but it's also a nice bonus to make a little bit of money. For a while, it was completely funny, my travels. It doesn't anymore, but it's still like, I mean, you know, getting 500 to 1,000 bucks for putting out a few videos, I mean, that's, I mean, that, that pays for, uh, for a month of 
lodging in Thailand, you know, so. And if you have any questions, please ask them again. Put the question mark in front of it. Helps me just identify what the questions are. And if I miss it, I'm on my iPhone, so it's hard for me to scroll back up. Kevin, I owe you at least a beer. Uh, so if you stop in Vancouver, please let me know. Yeah, we're gonna stop in Vancouver, but it's usually that turnaround cruise, so I'm not sure I'll be there long enough, to be honest with you. Uh, and then I hop on a plane. The day I get off the cruise ship, I hop on a, on a, a plane to uh, Taiwan, and then it goes to Thailand. I'm flying business class, life, life flat sheet, uh, live, live flat seat on, oh, what's the name of the airline? It starts with an E. It's like three words, Eve, Eve maybe. So I'm excited about it. Do you have a favorite cruise line? So, I mean, I cruise on Princess like 90% of the time. I like it because it's laid back. There's not a lot of kids. Eva Air, Eva Air, yeah. I, have you ever flown Eva Air? How's the uh, business class? That's what I'll be on. I've watched some videos. I'm flying the Vancouver to Taiwan flight and then Taiwan to, to Thailand. It's all business class. Um, so I'm excited about it. Like 90% of the flight is knocked out in that one leg. So I don't have to change flights a bunch, which is nice. They didn't have a direct flight to Bangkok, unfortunately. That would have been really nice. But they didn't. I couldn't find one. I know there used to be direct flights from Vancouver to Bangkok, but I couldn't find one now. So, and I didn't want to have to fly down to LA or San Francisco, so I just flew to Taiwan, and then I'll fly from Taiwan to um, to that. I'm not sure, Mike D, if it's Taiwanese or Chinese owned. Probably, I would imagine, since it flies to Taiwan, it's probably Chinese owned. Do you have a dental clinic in Thailand? Let me let me try to remember the name of it. Um, Bangkok. I think it's Bangkok Dental Clinic. <laughs> I think is what it's called. Something like that. And I'm. They actually have their own hotel. Uh, they kind of cater to dental tourism. And I'll be staying in the hotel for a month, getting all the dental work done that I that I need to get done. And some of it's cosmetic. It's vanity. You know, I'm gonna get veneers and and uh, and some crowns. So. Hopefully I won't need any root canals, fingers crossed. My last dental exam I didn't, so. Yeah, EVA Air, EVA Air. It has good ratings. Um, there was a couple different choices and it had the best ratings. iPads rock, had mine for six years. Yeah, I really like my, I got the iPad Pro M2, I think, chip, and it's, it's just great for everything that I want to do. Even video editing, like, it's so much faster for me to video edit now. And you know, the cru this cruise ship has Starlink, so I can watch Netflix and all that stuff on it. When I'm, when I'm going to bed, you know, I pop on Friends or Big Bang Theory or Everybody Loves Raymond. Um, what, that's one thing about Princess I don't like. I've been sailing with Princess over a year now, and they have not changed their TV shows. They still have the same season, they have one season of Everybody Loves Raymond. And so they haven't changed their TV shows. They do update their movies and they have a lot of like newer movies like Barbie and Oppenheimer and um, uh, stuff like that, but uh, Hunger Games, but they don't update their TV shows. But yeah, you asked me what my favorite cruise line is. I'd probably say Princess because I really like the laid backness. I really love Norwegian though. Number one, they go out of their way for veterans, for military, which I thought was really cool. Um, and their solo program is unmatched. The solo program on Princess, for lack of a better word, sucks. It's terrible. It, it's just non-existent. It's completely dependent on the solo group you have cruising, where uh, Norwegian, it's facilitated very well. And um, I like to go and dance at night sometimes, and they just have really good, um, that kind of thing is really good. And they started early, like 8 o'clock, because I like to go to bed early, <laughs> like 9 to 10. So I can go dance for an hour, take a shower, go to bed. Um, and Princess uh, doesn't have a lot of that. Um, but Princess is really, really laid back. 
uh, and there's not a lot of kids, which I personally like. I don't hate kids, but I just don't like them when I'm cruising. Um, yeah. How do you, and I also really like the food on Norwegian, their buffet. I eat 99% of the time in the buffet, so buffet is important to me, and I think Norwegian has the coolest, best buffets. Um, Princess is good though, it's like second. How do you approach cruising differently now since the major price increases? So I talked about this earlier, Steph. I got into the casino deals a long time ago, and I, I cruise for, I cruise on Princess with just taxes, port fees. I don't know when that's gonna end, because I've only lost about 50 bucks on Princess. <laughs> I just always pump the winnings back in, and I get free play on almost every cruise. Sometimes it's 50 bucks. My next cruise is 600 bucks. This one I have zero, but I just pump it right back into the cruise ship and then I'll win some off that free play and I just pump it right back in. Sometimes I'll win, a, you know, like seven, 800 bucks. I'll pump it back in. Um, I, I mentioned the story that started this. I had done $50 for a YouTube video. At the end of the cruise, I got $150 free play. Next cruise, I played that free play. I won like 1400 bucks. I pumped all that money back into the casino and then I just started getting free cruises. And I have maintained um, free cruises with Princess ever since then. This cruise, they had me as like a VIP. So I got like all kinds of stuff delivered to my room. I don't drink, they kept delivering me bottles of wine. I said, I don't drink. So they started sending me chocolate covered cherries. They gave me a free um, meal at Crown Grill. And they gave me at the end of the cruise a towel and a tote bag, like a beach towel and a beach tote. Um, and they kept inviting me to stuff. I didn't go to any of it. But uh, yeah, so um, I've been in that I've been in that casino thing forever. So my cruises are free other than taxes and port fees. So that ends up being about fifty dollars a night, taxes, port fees. Um, and uh, crew uh, appreciation or whatever it's called, um, gratuities, it ends up being about 50, 40 to $50 a night. I get a lot of onboard credit too, usually. I usually get about two to $400 onboard credit because I'm retired military. Um, I always get the future cruise credit, which gets you onboard credit. And I get, um, you got some, some of you have cruised with Princess and you've used my referral link, and so they give me 25 bucks. So that's pretty cool. I think they give you 25 bucks too, or 50 bucks or something. But, so I've got money that way. Um, so my cruises are usually 40 to $50 a month. So anywhere from 1200 to $1,500 to cruise. The only thing I buy on board is the, the uh, internet. And because I'm elite on Princess, I get 50% uh, off my internet. So it's, it's really not that expensive. And I have enough onboard credit that it always covers that, plus some. And so, yeah, I usually have a surplus of onboard credit. And so, yeah, um, cr so cruising is pretty cheap for me right now. At some point, this will end, and I'll go back to using Cruise Blum to cruise my planning, but I check Cruise Blum out all the time. And I can still cruise for um, if you're strategic about it, you can still cruise for $50 a night as a solo. 50 to $75 a night. Um, I'm friends with Don from uh, Don's family. Uh, I'm friends with Don from Don's Family Vacation. I, I watch his channel and he loves Princess. Yeah, I love Princess. It's just, I love the medallion experience too. A lot of people don't like the medallion. I love it. I love that my door is always, always opens when I walk up to it. I don't have to swipe anything. I, I mentioned this in my five things, five unique cruise gifts. So I bought this wallet and it goes on the back of my iPhone, has the magnet, it's really strong too, this one. Um, and it's there's a link for it, by the way, in that video and YouTube will give me like 50 cents if you buy one. Not YouTube, uh, Amazon. But it has a medallion holder. It's for an Apple AirTag, but a medallion fits in it. So one of my biggest complaints when I cruise is all the things you gotta carry with you when you leave the cabin. You gotta carry your cruise card or your medallion. Your cruise card could go right here. There's a card slot here. Um, and you gotta carry your wallet. Well, that's okay. I've got my ID card and my credit cards here. 
So I have my wallet and my phone. All of it's one device now. I don't have three separate things. It's all one thing now. And I really like that. Um, I know it sounds really trivial and simple, but I love that all I gotta do is remember to grab my phone. And I almost never go anywhere without my phone anyway. So now my phone, my wallet, and my medallion are all the same thing. And so I grab one thing when I leave, and that's it. That's great. And it, it still swipes, and I can use it like this. Haven't had any trouble with it. But when I'm on a cruise ship that doesn't have the medallion, then right here's a card slot for the card. And so you'll be able to just tap it on your, on, the, on your door and get in your room. With the medallion, your door just unlocks as you walk up to it. So I never even have to grab that, but yeah. So this thing's really cool. It's one of my favorite devices that I, since I started cruising again. Um, we'll see how long it lasts. I got it on Amazon. They also sell these at the Apple store. They sell an Apple version. Um, and I think they sell one with an AirTag, but maybe they don't. Maybe they, if you're only doing other cruise lines that don't have uh, medallions, then that one would work for you. It's just a credit card holder. But I like these foldable ones because this also is a stand for your iPhone. So you can have your iPhone straight up like this and it'll be a stand for it or sideways if you're watching like this. Like I'll just lay in my bed and watch YouTube on board since I have Starlink on here and I can watch YouTube. I'll just lay in my bed with this thing, have my iPhone uh, landscape and watch YouTube. And this is like a little stand for it. So that's pretty cool too. Um, one of those things that I found that I really like. Uh, question from Monica, have you ever cruised on Celebrity? Uh, I was supposed to and then the cruise got canceled. I really want to go on Celebrity. I've heard nothing but great things about it. I've heard it's very similar to the Princess experience, maybe even a little bit more elevated. Um, but yeah, I would love to go on Celebrity. Is there a spot for cash? Um, so I just fold the cash up and pull it, put it on the ID card side. I just fold it up and it fits right in there. So I don't really carry that much cash to be honest with you. Um, but because we're pretty much in a, for the most part, in a cashless world. In my world travel now, I rarely pull out my any cash. When I was in Italy with my mother a few months ago, I got a bunch of euro, and that was like they didn't like even in Italy they didn't like that I had euro. They just wanted me to um, use a tap or uh, tap my card or tap my phone. There was tap everywhere in Europe. We'll see what happens when I get to Asia. It's a little bit different. I know they don't have Apple Pay over there in most of Asia now. Maybe in Japan they do, but most of Asia they don't have it, which I have fallen in love with Apple Pay. Um, so It's working good, uh, the audio, yeah. Thank you, I appreciate that. I'm using the Ro Rode Wireless Go. I had some issues with it with this new iPhone because I had an adapter to hook it into my phone. And it, the audio, you'll, you'll notice it in my videos that I filmed, my audio sounded like crap. And then I found out later that the reason it sounded like crap was because Apple only wants you to use their proprietary stuff. So I actually just use the Apple cord now, which is fine. But I didn't realize that I was using my old, uh, my old cord. So, um, yeah. All right, if I missed your question, ask it again. I'll try to scroll up. Didn't care for celebrity on an older ship. Yeah, that's one thing I really like about Princess is no matter whether I'm on an old ship or a new ship, I like them the same. Their old ships and new, their old ships obviously have more whiz-bang things. The atrium areas, the, the middle area is usually a lot bigger and more grand. But for the most part, the, they're very similar. Um, I like the newer ships, the newer Princess ships, because they have great tracks on them, and I, I do a lot of walking. Um, where the these ships, the tracks aren't as good, but they do have promenade decks on these older Princess ships, which is actually awesome. Actually, I, to be honest with you, I like a full circle promenade deck better than I like a a top side running track because you're shielded from the sun if you want to be shielded from the sun on the promenade deck. So I actually like the promenade decks better, which are on these older ships. Uh, the Princess older ships, I've really liked them. One of my favorite uh, older ships are Grand and, and uh, Island Princess, which have the covered pool area, which I really like. So um, no matter whether I'm on an old ship or a new ship on Princess, I like them both. I've been on some of their newest ships. I was on um, 
not Sun, but the newest one, Emerald maybe, or whatever it is, that whatever the newest one is, that's the one I did a transatlantic cruise with my mother on um, a couple months ago. Uh, it, it was great, so I, I've been on their newest ship, other than obviously Sun, which sails soon, or maybe already started sailing. Um, but I really like their new ships, and I also really like their old ships. Yeah, just maybe it was, it was the one after Discovery, I think. The one right after Discovery. It was built in like, or launched in like 2022. I love the Beatles shows on um, NCO. Yeah, I really like NCO. Sounds good with the fountain in the background, yeah. For those just joining, got the got the fountain here. I'm right outside of Sabatini's restaurant on here. Um, if you were, you can't see through the mirror, you just see a reflection, which is what I see as well. But if you're sitting in Sabatini's there, you can see out and you have the view of the back of the ship. Right now it's raining here in Fort Lauderdale. So that I'm, I'm, I found a nice covered spot where I could, where I wouldn't disturb anybody and could do this live stream. So I'm really excited about it. Hey, never stop cruising. What's going on? Yeah, Enchanted maybe was is the one I was on. It started with an E. Uh, here's a question from Fred. He typed the word question first. That helps me find the questions really easy if you're asking questions. Kevin, where are you now and what ship? Um, so I'm going to repeat myself so those of you who have been on, on here for a little bit, sorry. So I'm doing 103 days on board Ruby Princess. I've already done 10 days. The reason I'm doing 103 days on one ship is because the itinerary was really diverse. Um, I'm doing about 40 days, counting the 10 I already did, in the Caribbean and Central America. We're doing a lot of those halfway Panama Canal transits, in and out of the Panama Canal. So we're going to places like Panama, um, Costa Rica, um, and then islands like Grand Cayman. We're gonna do all the saints, St. Lucia, St. Martin, St. Martinique, all of the, all the saints and all the, you know, the ABCs. And then we're, um, and then we're gonna go through and do a Panama Canal, a complete one, through the Panama Canal, over to the other side, of, of, over to the West Coast. Right now we're in Fort Lauderdale, cruising out of Fort Lauderdale. Then we'll head up the West Coast and do a uh, West Coast wine cruise, California, Oregon, um, Washington, and then uh, Vancouver, I believe. And then we're gonna go, I believe it's Vancouver, maybe it's San Francisco or Seattle, but we're going on a, a Hawaiian cruise, 16 day Hawaiian cruise. And then we're coming back and then starting the Alaskan, some Alaskan cruises. I'll do 21 days of Alaskan cruises. And then I'm hopping on a plane to Asia. I'm going to Thailand, getting a bunch of dental work done, some crowns and veneers to bring back my youth, my, my smile like it was when I was 20 years old. And, um, and then, uh, I'm gonna start doing some of the 30 in a wake up, living in different countries for 30 to 60 days. And I'm gonna do very detailed, um, very detailed, uh, uh, very detailed uh, cost analysis. So you guys know what it costs to do that. So yeah, that's, that's my plan. That's my plan for now. And I'll be in Asia for a while, but I definitely wanna live, I wanna live in Iceland for a month. I had, so, I had so much fun in Iceland on that cruise, so I want to go there for a month and live, and then we'll do some Europe, some, some, uh, some uh, Middle East. I mean, obviously this is going to be over the next year and a half probably with that, but yeah, that's, that's what's coming up. How did you get 50 to 75 a day cruise rate? Uh, so Monica, go watch my video on how to find cheap cruises. I use a website called Cruise Plum. You can sort it by the solo rate, and then you can sort it by cost per day, and you'll find lots of cruises for 50 to $75 a day. Cruise director Jacqueline. When I was on Ruby Princess last time, I can't remember who the cruise director is, but the hotel manager was this guy named Mike from Australia, and he was really good. What's your main source of income if it's not YouTube? So um, I'm retired military, so I draw a military pension. I was a saver my whole life, saver and investor my whole life. So my entire work career in the military and then as a lawyer, when I retired I became a corporate lawyer. 
Uh, as a lawyer, I've been investing, so I have dividend income. Um, and I own a rental property. I used to own multiple rental properties, and I own one. It's completely paid off, so I get uh, rental income from there. And then my YouTube income used to completely cover travel, but I didn't make YouTube videos for a long time, so obviously that falls off. Um, sometimes my YouTube channel covers all my expenses, but that's how I uh, travel full time. And then I have a, a ton of savings as well, um, but I usually just use my military income. I, I, I never use all my incomes. I, I, if you've been following my channel for a while, you know I usually live off two to 3,000 a month counting my travel. I credit card hack for credit card points to pay for flights. I never pay for a flight. I'm flying from Vancouver to Thailand. Uh, business class is completely free. That flight would have probably cost $2,500. It's completely free because I have a bunch of travel points. So I usually fly for free. Um, so that offsets the cost of travel. And um, yeah, um, I stay in a lot of uh, Airbnbs and things like that. And I used to live in a van, for those who don't know. And so my, I, I'm, I'm not a materialistic person. I'm very much a minimalist. I've been a minimalist for years, for over a decade now. So I don't really spend a lot of money on stuff. The only spend, stuff I spend money on are, are electronics usually. And I'll buy like a computer or an iPad um, every four years. I'll buy the latest. Like I, this year I refreshed everything. I bought the newest iPad because I do a lot of video editing on here. I bought the newest I, I watch, um, and I bought the iPhone 15 Pro because that's what I video, uh, I film with, I film my videos with, and um, I edit them with the iPad and the Air, Apple Pencil on uh, Final Cut Pro. And so uh, that's really the only thing I spend money on every year. Um, I'm, I'm not sponsored by Moreno Wool, uh, Unbound Moreno, but they provide a lot of my clothing because I've been wearing them forever. I, they never sent me anything for the first two years I talked about them, and then they gave my, my audience a discount. So a lot of my clothing I get for free too, which I'm really fortunate for about. So my expenses are really low. And anyway, like this shirt I've had for, I don't know, you guys have probably seen this long sleeve Moreno wool shirt for three or four years. So it's not like I spent a lot on clothing anyway. But when I do get clothing, I get these Moreno wool shirts and they're usually free. And then my pants, I buy at Lululemon, which are expensive, but they last me forever. And my shorts, I usually get on Amazon and they're like 15 bucks. Cause I wear a lot of swim trunks, uh, to be honest with you. I wear swim trunks as just regular shorts. Cause I like the liner. I like, um, I like uh, shorts with liners in them. So then I don't have to wear as much underwear. Uh, <laughs> not getting personal, but yeah. Uh, let's see. So this 100 day cruise you're on, it's going to be your last for some time? No, because I'm going to be cruising out of Singapore. A lot on Royal Caribbean, but some on Princess. I'm trying to get uh, to diamond status on Royal Caribbean. So there's a cruise ship that cruises out of Singapore. So I'll be cruising out of there a lot actually when I'm over in Asia. So I, I will be, I'll still be cruising. And I'll, use, I'll probably use cruising a lot to go from, like I'll do Trans-Pacific cruises to get back to North America, South America. And then I'll probably use Transatlantic cruises to get to or from Europe. Cause I like, I love those Transatlantic, Trans-Pacific. They usually cost less than a business class ticket and you don't have any jet lag and you get, you know, 14 days on a cruise ship and some cool ports and you get to cross one of the oceans, which is always fun. Will you be covering Honolulu, Pearl Harbor? I should do that from a vet perspective. I lived there for 10 years, so I also know it very well. I used to actually work there, <laughs> do some work there as a volunteer. Um, I'm from Missouri and the USS Missouri's there. And when they first brought the USS Missouri there, it wasn't ready to be a museum yet. And a bunch of us volunteered to help fix it up. This was back in the 90s, by the way. Um, here's a question for Never Stop Cruising. Okay, you asked me that one already. Uh, Monica says, do you use travel agent or just book it yourself? So I use Cruise Plum to find my cruises, and then I just go to the cruise website and book it. A travel agent might be smarter, 
And when you're booking back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back cruises, you, you probably want to be in the same cabin, at least I do. And that's very hard to do when you're booking yourself. So what I did was I, was, I booked all those cruises, and then I was on another Princess cruise with my mother about two and a half months ago, a transatlantic cruise from Rome. And I went to the future cruise desk, and she helped me put all my cruises, most of them in the same cabin. So last cruise, I was in a cabin for 10 days, and now I just switched to a different cabin for this cruise, and I'll be in that cabin for 34 days, which is three cruises. And then I switched to another cabin that I will be in for 59 days. So she got me as much as she could in the same cabin. Because moving cabins is kind of a pain in the butt. It's much easier when you stay in the same cabin. Some people like to move, but I'd rather just stay in the same cabin. So uh, that's, that's just me though. So. Which airline are you flying from North America to Thailand? EVA Air, EVA, EVA Air, EVA Air. Uh, Caroline, hey Caroline, what's going on? Um, do you ever have cheaper cabin, the ones that aren't on sale? Yeah, like I mentioned, if you go to Cruise Plum, the website Cruise Plum, they're not a travel agent, they don't make any money. They're just a bunch of guys from Google that like to cruise solo, and so they created a search engine. You can, it has such good functionality. I have a video about how to use it if you if you scroll back and look like in the last 10 videos, you'll see a, a video about how to find free cruises. And most of that video is me showing you how to use Cruise Plum. Cruise Plum, like the fruit plum, Cruise Plum. And on there you can, number one, you can search solo prices, which is awesome. Because usually that's really hard to find. And you can sort by cost per day, which is the true cost of a cruise and you can sort it by that. So then you'll be like, oh, this cruise, and it includes gratuities too. So it gives you the real cost of what that cruise will cost you. And so if it's a $50 a day cruise, um, that would be, you know, for 10 days would be $500, $500 cruise. And it also includes ports, port fees and taxes too. Um, but you'll find all different kinds of prices on there. And that's how you plan it out. Like for me, I was trying to find a cruise ship that was going a bunch of different places, but I could stay on that same cruise ship. And that's what I did on here. I'm on here 103 days, but it's a varied itinerary. We're in the Caribbean for about 30, some, a little bit over 30 days. And then we do a Panama Canal cruise, and then we do a West Coast wine cruise, and then we do a Hawaiian cruise, and then we do a Alaskan cruise. So it's a very varied itinerary. Um, it's a bunch of separate cruises, but I just booked them you know, all back to back. It's not a world cruise. Those are usually really expensive. Let's see. Monica says, I want to spend a month in Bangkok next year. Awesome. Bangkok's my fave. I'm going to do, I'm going to be in like the heart of Bangkok when I'm getting my dental work done, staying at a hotel that the dental clinic owns. It's kind of like dental tourism. You just stay in that hotel, you get your dental work done. I'm getting a lot of dental work done. I'm getting crowns and and uh, and uh, veneers. Hopefully I don't need a root canal, fingers crossed. Last dental exam I didn't, but uh, I'm getting all that dental work done. You just stay at their hotel and you, it's in the same building. So it's all like all inclusive. And then after that, I'm gonna go to this place called True Digital Park. And so I'll be sharing that a lot. It's a, it's a, a live work, play type of place in Bangkok and I'm excited to try it out. It's called True Digital Park. So you'll see that from the uh, around June, July time frame. It's so wonderful that you're retired and can travel the world. Yeah, I mean, it's I, a friend of mine uh, coined this phrase permanent sabbatical and I feel so weird saying retired. Um, I still like like work on YouTube but it's more of a hobby. I do earn money doing it, which is great. It's a nice little benefit of it, but I'd probably do it if, even if I didn't. But um, it's uh, like, that's kind of my job, I guess, when I'm out doing it. But I, I like to say permanent sabbatical. I think that sounds better when you're still in your 40s instead of saying retired. I'm in my late 40s, I'm closing in on 50 now. I'm 48, closing in on 49.
Hey, Jonathan's in the house. What's going on, man? Question, will you ever do van life again? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I love van life. I'm probably going to do a micro uh, camper. That's my next thing to do. I get offers all the time from, from because my, my van life videos are still very popular. And I get offers all the time from different companies to go and take their van out for a month. And at some point, I'm going to take them up on that. One thing I promised myself with this YouTube thing is I never let YouTube dictate my travel. We talked about this earlier in the live stream. I make a lot more money making van life videos, a lot more money. Like four times as much money as I make making cruise life videos and 10 times more than I make making normal travel videos, um, like overseas travel videos. Um, but I, I always promise myself I never let that dictate how I travel. I'm gonna travel how I wanna travel, document it, share it with you guys, but I'm never gonna let the financial aspect of YouTube. And I definitely wanna do van life again, but while I'm younger and able to do like more, I guess, athletic type of travel, more physically intense type of travel, I wanna do that. Um, but I will return to van life, and it doesn't mean I'm gonna wait to return to van life to when I can't walk or something. I'm gonna do it sometime in the future. When, when, when I say, you know what, I wanna do van life more than I wanna do anything else, that's when I'll do van life again, and it will be at some point, because I think about it all the time, I love it. I still follow all the van life channels. My friend Chocolate Man in Thailand, who a lot of you know, is doing van life right now, and I'm really jealous watching him build out his van. It's really interesting. Hey, there's 126 of you in here, which I super appreciate. If you don't mind smashing that thumbs up button, I'd appreciate it. Helps more people find the live stream. For the status on Princess, says 103 day cruise count is only one cruise. No, so every cruise counts as a cruise credit. So with Princess, you get credits two different ways. You get them via days at sea, or days on cruise, and you get them via cruise. And um, I think it's 15 cruises to Elite and 150 days to Elite. Whichever one gets you there quicker is the one they go with. When you're solo traveling, you get double cruise credit. You don't get double days credit, but you get double cruise credit. So really, you only need to have to take eight cruises to get elite, the highest level because each cruise counts as two cruises, whether it's a seven-day cruise or a 16-day cruise. So I'm well past that point now on here. By the end of this cruise, I'll have three, over 300 days on Princess Cruises, and I'm at like 50 cruises, I think, with Princess, because they count double, don't forget. So I did like 25 cruises, so to them I have 50 cruises. But like I just did a 10-day cruise, and that counts as two cruise credits. So we're about to go on another 10-day, it'll count as two. So th there's two ways to move up their tiered system, which I like and works out really well for a solo traveler because you can get the highest level really quick. The second highest level, which is platinum, is where you get half price internet, which I think is the most beneficial benefit. Um, at Elite, you get two things that I really like. You get a mini bar. I don't drink, so I just tell them to give me all waters now. Um, sometimes I'll tell them to give me half waters, half diet soda, but now I just usually just get all waters because I don't drink alcohol. So it's a lot less value to me than it'll be to you you drink alcohol and you get free laundry service. So whatever you send out doesn't cost you anything if you're elite, which is a great benefit. Although it's not such a big deal on Princess because Princess, every every uh, floor on Princess, every floor where there's cabins, they have laundry. So you can just do your own laundry if you want on here. It's about six bucks to do laundry. So you can just do your own laundry on board if you want. Um, so it's not as big a deal as it is on other cruise lines, but it's still nice to be able to just send your stuff out one day and get it back the next day or the day after. I didn't even use it last cruise. I just washed my stuff, so. Uh, if not too personal, how old am I? I'm 48 years old. What's your opinion of the latest big cruise ship, uh, Icon of the Seas? Like I'm interested in seeing it. Uh, it's super expensive for a solo cruiser right now, so it doesn't make a lot of sense for me. I'd love to be on it. Um, I'm not a big enough cruise vlogger to get invited. I didn't get invited to go on there. I probably wouldn't have taken them up on it anyway because um, I was doing this cruise. 
but uh, I know a lot of cruise bloggers went on there recently and uh, I would love to see it. I heard it's amazing. But to me, bigger is not always better. I love being on the small ships. Like when I did Iceland, we got in all those little tiny ports that the big cruise liners can't get in. Same when I did Norway. I get, we got into a lot of ports that the big cruise liners, big cruise ships can't get in. So sometimes it's not, it's great for the stuff on board, but it's not so great when it comes to like pulling into ports. And those also usually have water slides and rock climbing gyms and go-kart traps, which attract a lot of kids. And I prefer cruise ships that have less kids. <laughs> it's not that I don't like kids, I just don't like cruising with kids. <laughs> Greetings from Chile, what's going on? Let's see. Do you, do you ever have an end date planned for cruising? So I'll start traveling uh, end of May when I get off this cruise ship. I'll fly over to Thailand for a while and I'm going to be traveling around Asia a month at a time, a month to two months at a time in each stop. Uh, and I'll, and I'll, I will be doing some cruising as well, but I'll probably always integrate cruising into my travel because I just enjoy it so much. We, uh, let's see, I read that one already. Hey, going green mom's in the house, what's going on? Do I have an agent or do I book myself? I always book myself. See, sorry, trying to get caught up here. What brand of shorts with liners do you use? I don't know, There's, it's like some, I have a couple pair of Nike ones that I work out in. It's some off brand on Amazon, to be honest with you, I don't even know the name of it. If you Google like shorts with liners on Amazon, there'll be a ton that show up. They're probably all the same manufacturer, uh, Chinese manufacturer probably. Sorry, I'm trying to scroll through the messages here. Uh, from Lackey, do you have travel insurance uh, you recommend? So I use a Chase Sapphire Reserve card and that covers just about everything. Um, everything from ev evacuating you from a place, to trip insurance, to a rental car. So if you have a good travel credit card if, and you're booking that travel with it, it'll cover a lot of things. I've had to use my insurance before. I got in a fender bender in a, in a rental car. It was like $2,200 and they refunded it. I had a, uh, I got really sick and I had to miss a cruise and the cruise lines were being jerks about it and Chase refunded it. I've never had to use like the evacuation, but I assume that would work uh, just as well. So I have emergency medical insurance that way. I'm retired military, so I have TRICARE for life. So I have that. Um, I have pretty low cost health insurance. Uh, it's also another thing I'm very fortunate about. I know that's, that uh, impacts a lot of people when they retire, like what they have to pay for insurance before they get Medicare, US people at least. And so I realize how fortunate I am. Um, you know, being, the 20 years I spent in the military had its ups and downs and its challenges, but getting the pension right away and then getting um, the free health care is just, for what I decided to do after I um, decided to leave my job as a corporate lawyer. Um, it's just been invaluable to me and I feel so lucky that I that I have that. But yeah, so that that's insurance wise, that's what I use. Being 70 and solo, do you think Airbnb would be okay for me, Monica asked? Yeah, so whenever I book Airbnb, I book um, Superhost or now I think it's called like guest rated, highly rated, I always stick to those people. You're less likely to have issues. So yeah, I think no matter what your age, you can use it. Um, you can use that. Uh, we were talking about Grounded Life and they're in their 50s and they do a lot of Airbnb travel and hotel travel. They do a lot of hotel hacking, which I've been following their channel. They have a bunch of different channels, Global Life, um, Grounded Life, Travel, Grounded Life Finances, Grounded Life Asia, Grounded Life um, Thailand, I believe. 
They have a bunch of different channels, but I've really been getting in their Grounded Life Finances channel because they're very transparent. And I actually got a new credit card recently. I, I've always credit card hacked. I've always flown for free using Chase Sapphire Reserve. But I'm gonna start credit card hacking for hotel nights. And so I have the IHG now, the Premier, the IHG Premier, and I learned about that on their website. I used their affiliate link, so they got all the money for me using it. At some point, I'll put an affiliate link on here because they'll give you a bunch of money and they give me a bunch of points. But um, yeah, I'm really appreciative of them. But they use a lot of Airbnb, so you might want to watch them. They do a lot of, uh, they're, they're, they've actually documented it much better than I have. But yeah, they're a little bit older. I mean, not quite 70, but uh, they're a little bit older and that's what they do. Uh, Daniel Tobin says, so great, great to see you back. Oh, my friend Angela's on, on here. She's got a great YouTube channel if you haven't checked her out. Angela's a great YouTuber. She's getting ready to go to Pakistan, which is amazing, which means I'll probably miss her when I go to Malaysia because I'll be in Malaysia, I don't know, probably July, August time frame. But yeah, check out Angela's YouTube channel. She said, nice thumbnail on this video. Thanks, Angela. I appreciate that. Uh, Roger Santos is on board. What's going on, Roger? How you doing, man? Yeah, for those that don't know, the reason I was gone so long was my mother had surgery. I had to help her out. And then she, then I took her to Venice and I didn't want to film. I took her to Venice. We were there for almost three weeks and then we, or two and a half weeks. And then we, um, we took a transatlantic cruise from Rome back to the United States. And then we drove from Florida back to her home in Missouri. And then I stayed with her just a little bit longer. So it was great. Uh, Jody says, first time watching you. What's the difference between Princess and NCL in relationship to benefits and points? To be honest with you, I don't know a lot about NCL's point system. I haven't even, I've only been on a couple of their cruises, so I haven't even tracked it. Um, so I don't have a lot of knowledge for you there. What I do know is Princess is really easy to move to the highest level quickly as a solo. It only takes about eight cruises. And at their second highest tier, you get half price off internet, which I love. And at their highest tier, you get free laundry and a mini bar set up every cruise, uh, which a lot of people really like, um, which I appreciate. And they do like every night they have like elite platinum and elite guests like canopies or something, whatever they call those things um, with little sandwiches and stuff. I never go to it, but they have it all the time. Um, so I, I like Princess because there's less kids. Norwegian has a lot more kids. I do like Norwegian more because for their solo program, it's great. Princess, it's non-existent. Solo program sucks on Princess. It's completely dependent on the solos you have. Maybe it'll be a good experience for you, but most likely it's gonna suck because there's no organized solo program on Princess Cruises and it's just terrible. Kind of, can new pay, kind of, however you say it, I don't know. I'm not as cultured as you, Angela, you know that. <laughs> but yeah. But I don't, so I don't have a whole lot of experience with NCL, Jody. But uh, I do have videos from it. You can go back and watch. But for a, from a solo perspective, I'd say the experience is better if you're looking for more of a, a really good solo experience and more of a party atmosphere where Princess has good solo pricing. It's going to be cheaper than Norwegian, even, even compared to their studios, solo studios. But... And, and Princess is a lot more laid back and there's no kids. Where NCL is going to have a ton of kids on board because they have like go-kart tracks and stuff. Hey, why are you tripping? What's going on? Uh, good to see you back. Thanks. Uh, Angela's moving to Pakistan. Very cool. Uh, yeah, good night, Angela. I know it's about 2 a.m. where you are. Do you have a property manager that looks after your rental property? So I, I rent that to a a family member now, so uh, and he was a former um, maintenance man at like uh, hotels and stuff. So uh, I don't really need a property manager. At one time in my life, I owned seven, uh, seven uh, uh, 
uh, rental properties and I had property managers back then. And they're worth their weight in gold. Uh, Monica said, just got a proof for IH, IHD credit card, very cool. Have you considered streaming on Kick? You know, I, I have a lot of friends that do it. I have not, I've never even used Kick, but maybe I'll try that in the future. Uh, Monica says, or Monica says, welcome to Road Crew. I don't know if you just joined Monica or if you already joined, but if you did, thank you for joining. Um, I don't have a huge amount of benefits right now for channel members, but hopefully I will expand it more in the future. All you get is that cool little logo there and you get to spam all those emojis um, of my cartoon head. You're not required to bring your life jacket, but you are required to scan your own medallion with one of our friendly crew located at your muster station wearing a bright yellow hat. Glad I found, Jody said, glad I found your channel. Yeah, Jody, check out Cruise Plum, P-L-U-M, like the fruit. It's a great search engine for solo cruisers. You can sort it by, pri by price per day, which is the true cost of a cruise for a solo. Don't listen to all this solo supplement. That is just a buzzword. It doesn't mean crap. If you have no solo supplement, you can still pay more than if you have full solo supplement. It's a it's a buzzword to get thrown around. It doesn't mean any. It really doesn't dictate the price of a cruise. You really want to sort by um, cost per day, uh, and Cruise Plum includes your cruise costs, your ports, fees, taxes, and gratuities. So it's the true cost of a cruise. Thank you so much for your attention and welcome aboard. Once again, your rooms are ready for you to move into your home away from home whenever you want them. Monica says we had over a thousand kids on our on our last princess cruise. Wow, that's crazy. I've never seen that on a princess cruise. I was on Caribbean princess one time, and there was like 600. But normally there's not a lot of kids on princess cruises. Maybe on the Caribbean legs, but normally not on the other legs. Like this cruise I'm going on right now is 10 days. A lot of people, if you some princess cruises do seven day, but most of them do like 10 day or 14 day cruises. And so a lot of people don't. Uh, want to pull their kids out of school that long and they'll, they'll pull them out for seven day but not so you rarely get a lot of kids on a princess cruise plus there's usually there's one little kid zone that's really small but there's no slides or rock climbing walls or go-kart tracks or laser tag that stuff's not on here uh, are those rubberized wayfarers yeah they're the rubberized ones um, I really like them actually I really like them Matt just asked that question if these are the rubberized ones. Uh, is Mary P says, welcome back. Well, thank you, Mary. If you have a question, I haven't answered it. I'm caught up, so if I missed your question, it wasn't on purpose. It's because the streaming goes fast and I'm on my iPhone, so it's hard for me to scroll back. Uh, don't get me, I like kids, but not on my vacation. Yeah, that's always what I say. I say, um, don't get me wrong, I don't dislike kids. I really like them. I spent a lot of time with my niece when I was back home in Missouri. Uh, my niece and my nephew. Um, and uh, so I like kids. I just don't like them on my cruises. <laughs> right now it's raining like crazy. So that's why I'm not in a good view spot. And I don't have anywhere to set this so you can get a view of the, of the, but the pool's right over there. But yeah, I found this nice little cubby hole out of the rain where I could be outside away from people. Because it's raining, there's nobody here. So I'm not bothering anybody with my jibber jabber about cruising. And so, and I'm in this nice little cubby right next to the, uh, the water fountain, which is nice. There used to be a bunch of money in this water fountain, but it's not in there anymore. Where are you docked at? Right now, uh, Tamara. Hey, Tamara, what's going on? Uh, right now, we are docked at Fort Lauderdale. For those who just joined, I'm on a 103-day cruise. I've already done 10 days of it, so I have 93 days left. It's not a 103-day cruise. It's a bunch of cruises I booked on the same ship, back to back to back. The reason I did that is because there's a varied itinerary, so over the next 103 days, we're going to spend about 30 days in the Caribbean and Central America. We're doing a bunch of like halfway through the Panama Canal ones where you go to like 
Panama, Costa Rica, places like that. And then we're doing all the saints, like St. Saint Martin, uh, St. Saint Martin, St. Saint Martinique, St. Lucia, um, the ABCs, you know, all those. And then we're gonna do a tr Panama Canal transit, the full transit, uh, you know, stop in some spots in Central America, then head up the West Coast, do a West Coast wine cruise, California, Oregon, Washington State, Vancouver, and then we're going over to Hawaii and doing a Hawaiian cruise, four stops in Hawaii, which is great, four different islands. And I lived in Hawaii for 10 years, so I'm really excited about returning home, uh, plus seeing the other islands is gonna be cool. And then we're coming back to Vancouver and cruising to Alaska out of Vancouver. I'll be doing 21 days of an Alaskan cruise, and then I'm hopping on a plane, flying to Thailand, I'm doing some dental tourism there. I'll be um, getting veneers and crowns. I don't know if you guys will find those videos interesting. Maybe I'll do, I'll document that, like how much it costs and all the dental work I get done. But I'm, I'm, I'm exercising a little vanity here and I'm trying to get my 20 year old smile back. So I'll be uh, uh, doing a bunch of uh, crowns and veneers to, to get my, uh, my uh, Hollywood smile back that I had when I was in my 20s and not so impacted by all the coffee and tea I've drank over the years. Are you close to airport, Kevin? I can hear, yeah, we're close to FLL Airport, which is Fort Lauderdale Airport. We're only like a mile from there, probably. I haven't tried Virgin yet, but a couple of my buddies have, and I really want to try it. Hey, Peggy Travels is in the house. Greetings from Tampa. What's going on, Peggy? Um, yeah, we're close, Carolina. Um, what's the best advice you can give for starting and growing a YouTube channel? So my best advice, Tim at C, is just start making videos and putting them out there. Don't judge them too harshly. Um, if you go back and look at my channel, I have my very first video I made when I was in Washington, D.C. It's called, I think it's called something like Epic Fail on first video. I mean, it was terrible. And you just get better over time by doing it. Don't judge your own content. Um, some of the videos I've made, like my most popular video I've ever made, which made me almost $20,000 over its lifetime, I almost didn't post because the audio was kind of hit or miss. And had I not posted that video, I would have lost out on about $20,000 and a ton of subscribers. I probably got 20,000 subscribers from that video. And that's happened to numerous times. Another video I did about Malaysia, I almost didn't put out and that was like, that's like my third most viewed video of all time. So don't censor your content too much, put it out and let the audience decide if they like it. In the beginning, you won't get a lot of views. That's okay. Keep plugging away, keep making videos, keep watching videos on how to make YouTube videos, on how to edit videos, on how to film videos. You'll get better at that. Invest in good audio. Like you, for about 200 bucks, you can get one of these and it'll plug right into your phone. I do all my filming is iPhone. It, my filming has been iPhone for a long time. When I first started my YouTube channel, I bought the $10,000 camera with expensive lenses. And I'll be honest with you, there's not much difference. Maybe, there, maybe the quality was a tad better, but now these iPhones are almost as good. And I mean, look at the quality of this live stream video. I don't know how great it is right now. I don't know if I'm, I'm probably only streaming in um, 720p. But this is on my front, my front facing camera, not even the good cameras. And it's pretty decent on a live stream. And so you can get, four, you get 4K quality, you can do slow motion on these things now. And my advice would be just to invest in a good piece of audio equipment. DJI makes a good one and Rode makes a good one. The DJI one, I, I've never used it, but it just plugs right into your iPhone. It's probably a little bit easier to use than, the, than these Rodes. I just have had Rode for a while. I actually bought the new road that has two mics with it, so I'll be able to interview people in the future, and they'll have audio, so I'm super excited about that because I'd like to do some interviews in the future of other travelers and let you get their perspective because I can only give you the solo male traveler perspective, and you guys are probably going to want like the married with children perspective. I'm, I've been following this YouTube channel, these two YouTube channels, one called Mom Duty and one called Always Be Changing, Philippines and they just recently moved to BGC Philippines which I've never been there but I'm like in love with it and it's one of the places I'm gonna go this year to experience for myself but I'm, I'm in love with it and I really want to go there and visit so I've been binge watching their channel 
and they could tell you about what it's like to travel with young kids full time as full time travelers. Um, but not to get too off point, but yeah, that's my advice on starting a YouTube channel. Start making videos. Start putting, putting, putting videos out. Don't censor your content. Just put it out. Uh, let, let the world judge. And it, every time you make a video, you'll learn, you'll get better. You'll, build, you'll start building an audience. I mean, look, I didn't make videos for seven, eight months, and there's 127 people in this live chat. That doesn't sound like a lot for a channel with 100,000 subscribers, but that's a lot for a guy who hasn't made any videos in a long time. And it's because I have a, channel, a lot of very loyal channel member or channel watchers and subscribers that um, I'm really super appreciative of, and they're coming in and, and checking me out. I would say there's not a whole lot of people in here that are new to my channel. Most people have been on here. If you're new to my channel, type in new in the comments and let me know that you're new to the channel so we can say hi. Because you vlog your cruises is travel tax deductible, deductible. So there are certain things that are tax deductible. I almost, every, every year since I started making money on YouTube, I've always owed taxes because I haven't been really smart about that. Um, if I ever, at one point I was making six figures on YouTube when I was doing van life. If I ever get back to that point again, I'm gonna hire an accountant because I know I missed a lot of tax breaks. Um, I, every year I pay taxes because, um, every year I pay taxes because of my YouTube earnings, um, and which is fine. Uh, because you're self-employed, so you got to pay the Social Security side of it as well, which is great because it keeps me in the Social Security system because most of my other income sources, my military retirement, my, um, my military retirement, my rental income, my dividend income, it, it, it doesn't pay into Social Security. So the YouTube channel is actually great because I continue to pay into Social Security. Even though I've already hit my credits needed from all my time in the military, it's still nice to uh, continue to... Uh, pay that so my my when I can collect Social Security it'll be a little bit higher. But hopefully that answered your question. Yeah, I, I could I could probably deduct a lot more than I deduct. Um, I'm 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 always scared of being audited because I have so many income sources, and I I should have hired an accountant. I did one year, and that really helped me. But that was the year that I was out of the country for a year, and I qualified for the foreign earned income tax credit. But I really should do it every year with an accountant because I, I'm sure I could deduct like a ton of what I pay. But I usually don't. Plus, I don't know how it works when you pay for a flight with travel points. Can you deduct that? You know, I don't know. Because I know I don't have to pay taxes on the points I get. So would I be able to deduct on, you know, so that's stuff I need to uh, have an accountant like research. Do you have, do they have a cruise from Baltimore to Chile? There are cruises that run from the West Coast or East Coast that go all the way around and, touch, and, and hit Santiago. Princess has them and I know Princess does. I don't know necessarily out of Baltimore, but out of somewhere on the, on the West Coast and Holland America do, I know for sure. So I hope that helps Tim about building a YouTube channel. Uh, what happened to Chocolate Man in Thailand? I see he's doing van life now. Yeah, uh, Chocolate Man in Thailand just decided to do van life. He had found my channel way before, a long time ago when I was doing van life and I had found his channel about Thailand and we didn't even know that we followed each other's channel until we met. And we, so we had been conversing about van life for a long time. And it's something he wanted to do and he decided to go do it. He's still, he's just like me. He has a long-term Thai elite visa. He's still gonna go back to Thailand. But right now he feels like doing van life. It took me about a year straight of doing van life for me to go, okay, I'm ready to do something else. So we'll see how long it takes him. Maybe he'll like it even more. He's doing it different than me as well. He's building out his van, which is um, a whole separate uh, set of content and like a really cool thing to do that um, starting to rain really hard right now. And I'm trying to avoid getting wet here, getting my equipment wet. But yeah, he, um, yeah, he's doing van life right now. And uh, 
I, I'm really, it's really fun to watch him because he's building out a van, which is something I didn't do. I bought, I always was in made vans, like from Winnebago or Storyteller. I was always in pre-manufactured vans. Amir says, glad to see you back. What's your favorite princess ship? Probably Ruby Princess. I, I really like um, the newer princess ships because of the center area, the atrium or whatever they call it. I really like it for that area better on the newer ships, but on these older ships like Ruby, they have the um, promenade deck, which is deck seven, that goes all the way around the whole ship. And so I love every morning I get up and I walk the promenade deck and you get to watch sunrises, smell the salt in the sea, and it's just a really cool experience. You know, they do have the tracks on the newer ships, but they're up on the 15th, 16th level, and it's just a better experience on the promenade deck, and it's shaded also, so when it's like blistering Caribbean sun, you're not getting all wet, or all sunburnt. I said all wet because I'm starting to get wet over here. I do have a towel covering me up, but my phone's getting wet. Hey, we're, uh, we have 143 people in here. If you don't mind smashing that like button, helps more people find the live stream and, uh, and uh, maybe we can get up to 200 before this live stream ends, if you don't mind. Cruising from New York to Southampton, awesome. First time ever. Yeah, I did that last year. I cruised from uh, the East Coast to Southampton. I loved that. That was the Fire and Ice Cruise. Uh, through like uh, Iceland and Norway, one of my favorite cruises ever. And uh, then I actually cruised back later that year with my mother from Rome to Fort Lauderdale. So I've done two transatlantics this year, I love it. Thanks Carolina for helping out there. Woo! I don't know if you can't see it, but it's like blowing, blowing rain on me. Uh, ho hopefully, I mean, I'm, I'm covered, but it's like blowing into me. Hopefully it doesn't get any worse than it is right now, and I'll be okay, and I'll be able to, uh, but if not, I'll go inside. There's a little, um, there's a little uh, kind of like a lounge area in here, and I'll be able to just go in the lounge area. Can you show the front portion where you're sitting? Sure. <laughs> it's not, not much to see, just rain. We're in the, uh, I'm sitting next to a fountain here. And then right over there is the back of the ship and there's a pool. And I don't want to walk out into that area because it is pouring down rain right now. Sarah Travels, there's my buddy. She's down in Colombia. I was in uh, Cartagena, Colombia a couple days ago. I love Cartagena, it's so beautiful. Have you been on any Viking cruises? No. I was supposed to go on a Viking river cruise, the, the Christmas market cruise in Europe, but my mom wanted to go to Venice instead. So I switched us from the, the Christmas cruise to, the, um, to staying in Venice for a couple weeks and then taking a cruise back. Is that, are you the Tamara? So, no, I've already, I've asked you this before. I was gonna ask you if you're the Tamara that I was on the cruise with but I don't think you are. That'll be just spam some of the special emojis you get when you're a channel member. Hey, Jen and Tommy, speaking of van life, uh, RV life, on the road life, they got a good YouTube channel too. So if that's what you're craving and you're always yelling at me for not, be, not doing van life, go check out Jen and Tommy's page. Uh, Rich, yeah, Rich has been a, Rich has, Rich has been a member for almost three years, which I think you'll get a new emoji. I don't think you're at the max emoji, but maybe the max emoji is two years. So the thing next to his name that shows the band, that was my old logo when I was van lifing, and I just kept it that because I did a, a vote on it with the members, and they just wanted me to keep it the same instead of updating it. And then uh, I've added some of those little emojis that you can spam, like you'll see the cruise life one that L LV just did, but I, 
I added a few more that are not just van life, but I can't believe the members that stuck with me through this. Um, at one time I had like 300 members, but there's 40, I think it's 42 that are still there. And I can't even believe that, that 40 people stuck around even though I didn't make videos for a long time. So I appreciate that. Uh, Peggy says, can you share a little bit how your mother enjoyed Italy and cruising? Yeah, so my mom really enjoyed it. I didn't do a lot of filming then because I just wanted to focus on quality time with my mother. Um, and it was great. Like she had never been overseas before other than Canada. That's not overseas, but she'd never been out of the country before other than Canada. And she'd done some Caribbean cruises. And so showing her Europe was amazing. Um, we lived in an Airbnb, a, an old, uh, we lived in an amazing Airbnb from the 1400s, from the 14th century, so 1500s. And we had the best Airbnb host, this old Italian lady. And it was her parents' place that she had inherited when they passed away. And it had a bunch of antique furniture in it, including like old wash basins. I mean, it was updated and modern. So it was nice from that respect but it also had all the antiques from that her parents had and grandparents had before them. And it was just beautiful. We lived right over, we lived on a canal, half our building, half of it was with water in a canal. We had a, we had a, our, you open your windows and you're looking into the canal and gondola drivers and a little bridge. And it was amazing. We did an Airbnb tour there where they, a food tour where they took us around to all these different places to eat. And we went to um, all over Vatican. We were there for two and a half weeks. She really wanted to, not Vatican, um, Venice. She really wanted to see Venice. And we just, we just enjoyed Venice, eating Italian food, um, going to St. Mark's Square. She did a little shopping. And it was just a great experience for her. Then we took the train. We, we did first class on the train. So the reclining seats, the three, four hour train ride from Venice to Rome. And we stayed in Rome for a couple days and explored Rome. She's, my mother's religious, so we went to Vatican City. We did all the museums in Vatican City. We didn't see the Pope that day, but um, it was just really cool for her to experience that. And then we hopped on a cruise ship. We went to Gibraltar, France, Spain, um, Portugal. And then we did transatlantic back to Fort Lauderdale. And then we, I rented a car and we drove from Fort Lauderdale to St. Louis. My mom really doesn't like to fly. Uh, so that's why we did that. We took the cruise back and we drove. On the flight over, I didn't mention, we flew business class to Frankfurt, Germany, and then business class to Venice, which is only like an hour flight. But we flew business class from St. Louis to Frankfurt. There's a direct flight, which is amazing. And so she got a lay down flat seat because my mother has like knee problems and back problems. So it was great to be able to, her first time ever flying business class, which I booked using points, so it was free. Um, I think if we booked it separate, it was like $1,300 for both flights uh, with the first leg of it being business class. And that was really cool to, sh to have that experience with her. I'm going to try to do one trip a year with my mom like that um, to just show her the world and uh, it's something that she has never done and like, um, like financially like would she wouldn't be able to drop you know ten thousand dollars on her trip but uh, I'm fortunate to be in a financial position where I can do that and also I have all these points so it's free to fly and and I travel anyway so it's money I've, I've already gonna spend so uh, half of its money I'm already gonna spend anyway so uh, it's just great to have her tag along uh, my mother's 70, but she's had a bunch of knee surgeries and uh, had to have, I don't want to give too much of my mom's medical history, but she has complications with diabetes. So she had to have like part of her foot removed and things like that. Things, some of those kind of complications that come with, with diabetes. And so um, I try to make it as comfortable as I can. And uh, it's just been great to like share the travel experience with her. Uh, in the future, if she comes with me, I'll probably film, and she'll probably want to be in the videos. But I really wanted it to just be me and her quality time, and so that's why I didn't film during that. You're a good son. Yeah, I mean, I, 
all her other kids, I have, um, I have four siblings. All her other kids are in the vicinity of her and spend a lot of time with her where I've been a bad son where I haven't spent because I joined the military at 18 and I've just been on the go ever since. And so it was nice to spend that quality time with her. So Caroline, you'd be surprised in the parts of Italy we were at, it's more of a seafood based diet and there was a lot less cannolis and pizza than you would think. There still was pizza, but Venice is really a fish based diet there. And so not until we got to Rome did we have like pizza. There's still pizza there, but it's a lot less than you would think. Tara said, of course you're still on. <laughs> Well, you need to go back and watch my soliloquy on how appreciative I am of people who stayed channel members over all this time. When were you in Venice? Did you visit the island of Brno? Yes, we did. The glass island of Brno, and we actually got some stuff made from there, which I was really excited about. And um, we were in Venice, oh God, what we were there in November. No, October, October and part of November. No, November and part of December. So when we were there, it actually wasn't that cold in November. It was probably Fahrenheit. It was probably 60s every day, 60s, 70s every day, sometimes 50s at night. Hey, Apple Gigi's on. What's going on, man? What is your diet looking like these days? So a part of hanging out with my mom is I gained a ton of weight, um, but I started... As soon as I started cruising, I started my diet back up and exercising more. And in my last 10 day cruise, I lost five pounds. My goal is to lose 30 pounds though. I, for the first time ever in my medical exam, they said, hey, you're pre um, high cholesterol. So if you're like this next visit, we're gonna put you on medication. And I was like, hey, let me fix that. <laughs> so I need to lose about 30 pounds. So um, I need, to be, my, actually, to be honest with you, I really need to lose about 40 pounds, but I'm at, I started at 210, and now I'm 205. My healthy weight is around 175. My normal weight that I've carried for all these years is about 185. So I gained a ton of weight, because my mom cooks constantly, and I don't work out as much when I'm visiting her. And so, not to give you guys too much, but, Someone asked how old my mother is. She is 70. Um, if I missed your question, ask it again. Uh, someone asked where I'm at now. Apple G asked where I'm at now. So um, I'm, I'm in Fort Lauderdale. It's raining, pouring cats and dogs. I'm doing a 103 day cruise. I've already done 10 days of it. I'm gonna be on the same cruise ship. It's a bunch of different cruises, but it's varied itinerary. We start uh, doing Caribbean, so I'll be in the Caribbean about, uh, about another month. And it's part Caribbean, part Central America, slash Panama, half of Panama Canal cruise. So it's a bunch of those. So we're doing all the saints, like St. Martin, St. Lucia, all those saints, St. John's. And we're also doing a lot of Central America, like um, Wataku, uh, uh, Costa Rica, Panama, places like that. And then we're doing, um, and then we're going through the Panama Canal. We're doing a full Panama Canal cruise, which will take us to the West Coast. And I'm doing a West Coast wine cruise, California, Oregon, Washington coast, up to Vancouver. And I'm doing a Hawaiian cruise over to Hawaii. And we're coming back and I start the Alaska leg of my cruise, 21 days in Alaska. And then I'm hopping on a plane to Thailand where I'm going to do at least 30 days in Bangkok. I'm doing the dental tourism thing. I'm getting a bunch of dental work done and I'll probably document that on my YouTube channel if people are interested in that, like cost and the procedures. Uh, and um, yeah, uh, that's my plan now. And then I'm gonna start country hopping again. Mal Malaysia's on the docket. 
Vietnam's on the docket, Singapore's on the docket. I'm gonna live in those places a month, document my expenses, share them with you, all that good, fun kind of stuff. Kevin, do you keep up with your 10,000 steps a day? Yeah, I'm actually doing over 20,000 steps a day. Right now, I'm averaging about 25,000 steps a day. So, yeah, it's good. How about the Leaning Teaser uh, Tower of Pisa? Yeah, I did Leaning Tower of Pisa. If you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen a lot of that. Um, we, we went to uh, Florence, and I took my mom to the Leaning Tower of Pisa, which was awesome. Uh, did you find less expensive to group your crews into one? I booked them cruise by cruise, and I'm on casino deals, so all I got to do is, for these cruises is pay taxes, port fees, gratuities, and a $200 deposit, which you get back in cruise credit. So these cruises, this, the cruise I'm on now is costing me about $40 to $50 a night, so $12 to $1,500 a month. Do you have an affiliate for Chase Sapphire Reserve? Yeah, it's down in the, down in the description below. I'll also be throwing one on there for IHG soon. Uh, I don't know if I really want to recommend them yet because I haven't used them, but I'm going to be using them a lot in Asia. But I, but I do follow that channel. Um, I keep forgetting the name of it. Um, Grounded, Grounded Travel. Uh, they have a channel called Grounded Travel Finances and Grounded Travel Travel. Grounded something travel. Grounded life maybe. Um, I really like their channel, and I use their affiliate link to get IHG, and they use it really effectively. Grounded for life, yeah. Uh, uh, and I'm going to start, uh, uh, it's a couple that travels full-time. They've been traveling since 2019. We do a lot of the same type of travel. They live in countries for 30, day, 30 to 90 days. They live on cruise ships a lot. They did something I didn't do, which I want to do, which is travel by Amtrak across the country. So they've done a lot of similar things to me, so I really like their channel. Hey, Casey, there's my, uh, there's my cousin, Casey. Uh, Casey's my real-life cousin. Her father is my uncle, my Uncle Dave, my, uh, my favorite uncle. <laughs> Actually, my only uncle on my mom's side, so that makes it pretty easy for him. But, how you doing, Casey? Uh, how does the Ruby look since dry dock last year? Any big changes? Ruby looks exactly the same to me as she looked last year. But, I've been on so many cruise ships, I might be screwing that up. Uh, Nana on the run just joined the road crew. Thanks, Nana. I know you were a member before. I don't know if that's just showing up, but thank you. Uh, Casey said, have I done any Disney cruises? I've never done Disney cruises. I have a good friend, and she does a lot of Disney cruises. I've always felt like I would be, as a solo male, almost 50-year-old, I felt like it would be a little creepy for me to do cru Disney cruise, but I love Disney. I'm a huge Star Wars dork. I love Disney movies, so I should do one in the future, but they're a lot more expensive than other kinds of recreational cruising. And so I haven't yet, but probably at some point I will. But uh, I haven't noticed a lot of changes to Ruby, but there could have been, and I just don't notice them. It seems like maybe the cabins are a little bit more updated, but I could be wrong about that. How many miles is 2,500 steps? Over 10 miles. I get over 10 miles a day for sure. How tall am I? I am a little bit over 5'11". Yeah, 205 is, is, I got up to 210. That's what I weighed in when I went for my medical appointment. I couldn't even believe it. I kind of should have known because half my pants were super, super tight. But it's my own fault, you know. My mom cooks constantly and she's constantly like, and I'm not blaming my mother, I should have self-control, but she's constantly like baking like cookies and saying eat them. And so, and I'm the only one there. So she bakes 25 cookies. So then I'm all day I'm like eating cookies plus, you know, whatever food she makes for dinner. And my plate's always like loaded, right? She always loads my plate up. And so I, I gain a ton of weight when I'm around my mother. It's like, it's like cruising for me when I'm at my mother's house. 
where when I'm on cruise ships, I eat really healthy. Like I've eaten nothing but things that are, I've eaten nothing but fish, a little bit of rice, a lot of like walnuts, um, Kalamata olives. Every morning I'm doing the juice on here, the, ju the green juice is on here. And, and so I don't do breakfast, I cut my coffees out because of it. I'm drinking green tea instead. Um, once every, every, like my goal is to lose a pound every three days. So on a 103 day cruise, that's 30 pounds. So last, I just did a 10 day cruise, I lost five pounds on the cruise. And every, um, every milestone I cross, then I go ahead and get myself a butter pecan latte as a reward. So that's every five pounds for me. I'll go get a, a but I'm doing it with almond milk instead of dairy milk. Uh, so I cut out all the dairy as well. And uh, anything that'll, I had borderline high cholesterol and my doctor told me if it's borderline high next time, we're gonna put you on meds. I've never been on medication in my life and I don't wanna start now. So I, uh, I, I think it's mostly because of my weight and my poor eating a lot of fried foods. So I'm done with fried foods. I'm done drinking soda and that's what it is. So yeah, they wanted to start having me take statins. So and my cholesterol isn't super high, but it's borderline high. So, and I've never had that in my life. So I'm gonna get my weight down, which I think will solve the problem and uh, continue with my 20 to 25,000 steps a day. Yeah, I cut out my fancy coffees. I'm just drinking green tea at the moment. I will bring those fancy coffees back in, but with almond milk instead of uh, dairy when I uh, want to get back around. Uh, my doctor also said that the dairy might be causing inflammation. Um, I didn't have lo high blood pressure or anything like that, just uh, high cholesterol. So. Hey, KC, what's going on? Well, thanks, Nana, on the run for becoming a member. I had, all, I had all these people that stuck with memberships for so long, I couldn't even believe it. Like, there are plenty of solo males, love Disney. I didn't find it creepy. Okay, good. <laughs> I know I, if I missed your question, please ask it again. I'm trying to scroll up here. Is Cambodia, uh, Angkor Wat and Cambodia are definitely on my agenda. I've never been to Angkor Wat, so it's definitely a bucket list item and it's really easy to get to from Thailand. It's like a $30 flight. I'll probably just stay in, in Cambodia for a month. I'll have to see what IHG hotels. I've been to Laos before, um, but I've never been to Cambodia. I heard you gain weight, not lose. So I have a video, Casey how I lost uh, nine pounds on a crew on a 16 day cruise. And it's actually really easy. Let me tell you why it's easy to lose weight on cruises. There's a couple reasons. Number one, you end up walking around a lot. Um, and if, you're, if your knees are good, you can always take the steps, which I do. So you get a ton of stairs every day. And you can, I get up every single morning. The first thing I do in the morning is I get 10,000 steps. It's pretty easy to get walking around the promenade deck. And I just put on a couple podcasts and I'm out in the beautiful, I'm out looking at the beautiful ocean at sea and it's easy. If you're pulling into a port, I still do the same thing because you usually don't pull into a port until around seven or eight um, or nine. And so I use, I, I'm an early riser. I usually get up at five. I start walking at seven, at 5.30. And so by 8.30, I have anywhere from 10 to 15,000 steps already built in. And now the rest of the day, everything is all bonus. I usually end up getting 20 to 25,000 steps. Uh, so that's the first reason. It's really easy to get some exercise. There's also gyms on board. Um, and food, it's easy because you always have healthy options at your disposal. When you're at home, you might not make um, salmon every day. But on board this cruise ship, I can guarantee you there's gonna be two, things, two healthy meats every day. It's gonna be grilled chicken and salmon and usually some other for form of fish like tilapia that they're gonna grill. They will have fried versions of those, but they will have those grilled versions. They also have grilled, um, they also every single day will have grilled vegetables every day. They'll have a huge salad bar. They also 
on this Princess Cruise, they have 10 different kinds of nuts, which nuts are really good for, for someone trying to lower their cholesterol. So every day I get a little bowl, I put walnuts in it, I put some, a little bit of the sunflower, some of the, um, some of the almonds, some of the, uh, some of the pumpkin seeds, and then I throw in some raisins, and all of a sudden I got trail mix. Like walnuts and, and almonds are expensive back home. I throw all them in, I mix them up, and I have trail mix, and I bring it back to my room, and I'll snack on it a little bit every day, and I bring back green tea to my room. And those green teas are expensive if you buy them out in town. And then another snack I like to have are, I used to get kalamala olives and cheese, but I've cut out dairy and high cholesterol items. So I'll get kalamala, kalamala, kalamala olives and um, walnuts. And I love kalamala olives, but they're expensive as all get out back home. And I just, I can get a whole, I can get a whole bowl of kalamala olives on this Princess Cruise for free. And so, so those are the two reasons it's actually easy because you have, you have nonstop, um, you have access to food every day healthy food and every morning on princess they do ju juices and they, they do a ju green juice which is cucumber avocado spinach and something else and it's actually pretty good and so i get they come in these little small ones and i get three of the small of those and i get one watermelon and i dump them all into a glass about this size and that's my breakfast and, and then i'll drink green tea for caffeine and so um, it's actually really easy to not gain weight on a cruise ship. It's easy to gain weight too because you also have all the ba bad foods for you. But it's really easy to lose weight if that's your focus because you have an unlimited amount of options. Or you have, not unlimited, but you have, you're exposed to healthy options every day. And they always have an Indian section as well on most cruise ships because there's so much of the Indian population cruises. And, so and also there's a lot of Indians that work for the cruise line. So they always have Indian section and that, that food tends to be a little bit more healthy. There's a lot of vegetarian options. So. See, Amir says, what's the monthly average budget and saving you recommend for a travel lifestyle? So I have been traveling full time for, since 2019 in all different kinds of ways. Um, whether it's on um, cruise ships or living in a different country every 30, 60 days or living in Thailand full time uh, or living in van life. And it's been pretty much about the same for all of them. And it's somewhere between two and 3,000. Now certainly when I, I've lived in like Chiang Mai, Thailand and it's much less because your living expenses are so much cheaper there. Like you can get a really nice, I don't get, I don't get like crappy, um, Airbnbs either. I get like pretty nice Airbnbs, sometimes with ocean views. And like in, in Chiang Mai, Thailand, or f during COVID in Jam Tien, Thailand, you can get a beachfront condo for two to three hundred dollars a month. So with only spending that, even if I spent a thousand dollars a month on food and five hundred dollars a month on entertainment, I was still under two thousand a month. I could have easily lived on a thousand a month in Chiang Mai uh, because it's so inexpensive. So but I would say 2,000 is pretty safe for the van life and the, and the living in different countries it's part of it. For cruising, I would say you could cruise as a solo for anywhere from two to 4,000 a month, depending on how picky you are. Um, use Cruise Plum, Plum the Fruit, Cruise Plum, and you can search by solo rate on there and you can find a lot of cruises for 50 to 75 dollars a day which is 1500 and that's all inclusive including gratuities taxes port fees cruise fare um, look on there and you can find tons of cruises for 50 to sometimes below 50 during covid it was way below 50 35 dollars a night for a lot of the msc cruises um, but you can find for about 50 to 75 dollars a night with princess right now you can find 70 to 100 dollars a night um, if you get involved in the casino stuff, like me, I just happened upon that, and I, I can cruise with Princess full-time in an inside cabin for anywhere from 1000 to $1,500 a month because of that. And I didn't lose that much money gambling. It, for whatever reason, I got in at the right time, 
and I've just been locked into their system, and so I've been getting these highly supplemented cruises from the from the casinos, and I get I get a, a free play on every almost every cruise, anywhere from 50 bucks to 600 bucks, and I just pump that back at the casino, and I pump all the winnings I get from that back of the casino. I don't waste any of my own money, and for whatever reason, I still get free cruises. Um, they're not free technically. You got to pay taxes, port fees, and gratuities, but it ends up being anywhere from thirty to fifty dollars a night, all inclusive. So, um, so I would say, if you want to do all the ways I cruise, I would say plan on anywhere from two thousand a month to four thousand a month if you're integrating cruising into it. If you just want to go and live in Thailand or the Philippines or Vietnam, you can do that on a thousand a month. I would recommend at least. 1500 a month and I like about 2000 a month um, but this year I'm going to, to live a little bit more comfortably I'm going to get a little bit more higher end places when I'm in Asia anywhere from 500 a month to 1500 a month um, but that's just by choice this year uh, and so my my I'll, pro I'll probably travel full-time for around 2000 to 3000 a month I use travel cards, like on here I use Chase Sapphire Reserve. You'll see a link down to them. I think they give you 75,000 points, which is like, in the Chase Sapphire Reserve world, is like $1,100. Um, and I just, I never pay for flights. I haven't paid for flights since I started traveling because I use my credit card points. When I stay in an Airbnb, I pay with my Chase travel card, and so I'll get points. If it's a thousand dollars a night, I get three thousand points for that month, and so, and I everything else I spend, food and everything, I I just put on that card, and I get a ton of points. This year I'm going to be using um, the IHG Premier card. I haven't used it yet, so I don't want to link th that yet. Um, I only link stuff that I use and I'm really familiar with and I can recommend. But get into a credit card program now and start building up those credit card travel points and you'll never pay for a flight. I never pay for a flight. And hopefully this year I have the IGC, IGH Premier. And when you have that card, you get, uh, it's $95 a year, but that card pays for itself really quick because you get one free night a year. So that'll pretty much pay for the card, the 95 a year. Plus every three nights you stay, you get the fourth night for free and it's stackable. So what I mean by that is if you stay eight nights, you get two nights for free, so you only pay for six nights. If you stay for 40 nights, you get 10 nights for free. So it's good to stay four night increments. You get your third night for free. And you also can buy their credit card points, and their, their credit card point exchange is cheaper than their, the monetary value of the room. So for instance, let's say the room is $100 a night. If you pay with points, the point value that you're paying with is about $45 a night once you, once you factor in that free night. And so actually in, Thai, in Thailand, in Jam Tien, Pattaya Beach, Thailand, I found a Holiday Inn Express there right next to the beach that is with the, with the bonus night free every four nights is only $27 a night. So you're staying in a hotel and it's like a suite with like a living room and a room. So you're staying in a hotel um, and every night, or you're staying in a hotel for a month for like 800, under $800, 700, whatever it ends up being, 27 a night, let's see, 270 for 10 nights, um, 276, uh, so about 800, 800 for a month. So you're staying in a hotel you're getting access to their lounge because you have the premiere, so it gets you access to the lounge, I think after 40 nights. And so you're getting free food every day, free breakfast and free, they have like a free um, dinner every night or whatever. So you're, you're getting all these free benefits from it. Anyway, I'm gonna try that this year. I got that from Grounded Life, I, I believe it's what it's called, Grounded Life Travel. I really love their YouTube channel. There's, there's three YouTube channels I've been watching a lot lately. This Grounded Life, it's called Grounded Life Finances, Grounded Life Travel, but mostly they're Grounded Life Finances. And they're very, um, they're very transparent about their cost to travel. 
It's a, it's a couple that's in their 40s. They started traveling at the same time I did, and they travel similar to I, to the way I travel and the way you guys are probably interested in. Half the time they live on cruise ships, half the time they stay in a country for a month to two months at a time, and they credit card hack, so they fly for free, but they also stayed on, they stayed in, uh, uh, they went around on Amtrak's for a while, which I thought was really cool. And they also have a YouTube channel, uh, and they make a lot more money than I do. Even though we have about the same amount of subscribers, they just get a lot more views. Um, but their, uh, their channel's really interesting. And recently I found a video about IHG and they're traveling, staying in IHG hotels along with Airbnb, where I've always just stayed in Airbnbs. And so I'm going to, I really liked the way they explained it and the cost benefit of it and like the status you get from the credit card, which I thought was really cool. And um, they use a couple different hotel credit cards. I was always a big Hilton guy and I found out through their channel that that's kind of like the crappiest one, even though I love Hilton hotels and I'm the highest, I'm a diamond with Hilton. Um, I'm going to use IHG and I'll probably use World of Hyatt as well. Sorry, I'm going off on this tangent. Um, the, this World of Hyatt as well because my Chase Sapphire Reserve Points, which is my main travel card, I can exchange one for one for Hyatt, which are the most valuable hotel travel points. Uh, but it's it, it's really fascinating. I'm going to start with the IHG and then expand to the Hyatt. But that's all in that Chase world of credit cards, and so you they're all connected. And so when I log onto my Chase app, I can already see my IHG Premier credit card along with my Chase Sapphire Reserve credit card. And by the way, I want to preface this by saying don't ever carry debt. I have no debt in my life. Even my house is paid off. My rental property. Don't ever carry debt. The only way this works is if you pay off your credit card immediately and don't get any interest because the interest is 20 to 23%. If, you're, if you can't afford to pay it back, do not do this. It will not be worth it. But um, anyway, I just went down a rabbit hole. But yeah, so this year I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay in Airbnbs but also integrate that IHG into it and then probably World of Hyatt at some point and maybe Marriott. Do I worry about the environmental impact of cruising? I try to cruise with cruise lines that are more environmental friendly, like Princess is very environmental friendly. Everything they sell on board is made with recycled stuff, all their medallions and all that kind of stuff. Um, they also have this coated bottom that helps them travel through the water. So there is an environmental cost, but I'm also kind of offsetting that because I don't own a car. Um, I, you know, so there is things I'm offsetting that with. I don't know if I'm completely offsetting it. It's definitely something I should think about more, and it's something I try to be cognizant of. But it's not something I go out of my way to try to do. But it is, I mean, it is a good point to bring up for sure. Hey, Judith's in the house. I met Judith right actually on this ship, right below here, one deck below here in the bar right there that's below me, uh, the Ruby Princess. And we've been friends ever since. We sailed on the same cruise ship that I cruised back with my mother on. Um, and it was just great seeing Judith again, but I think Judith has a question. I want to say hi. Question is, is it too early to start packing for April cruise? Uh, don't answer that. I'll just stay busy. I, it's never too er early to start packing. I just booked a 12-day transatlantic for 1200 Canadian with a drink package. That's a really good deal. Um, MCO to Rome. That's a really good deal. What uh, cruise line, Nana? That's actually a really good deal with uh, with the packages included. What well, cruise line? Didn't see the link to Chase below. Yeah, I need to add that and I need to add the IHG, although I'm not going to start plugging the IHG until I start using it because I haven't used it yet. And I don't like plugging stuff that I haven't used, but I might as well put it on there. Um, but again, if you want to go to Global... Uh, is it? I always forget the name of the channel. Grounded. Grounded, uh, Grounded Life, they have an affiliate link. I just use theirs, so I'm gonna get them. I think I think they get 40,000 or 70,000 points from me, and I'll do it really, I'll actually 
because you got to do four thousand dollars or no three thousand dollars a spend in three months to qualify for the bonus and i owe a bunch of taxes this year so i'm just going to put that tax bill on there <laughs> and that'll hit my spend and then that'll trigger their bonus which will be great for them um, and i've had i've had four people that have cruised princess and the way princess works is if you use my link below they give you 25 bucks and they give me 25 bucks um, the way princess's bonus works is if you cruise princess the person you signed up with through their link you don't you don't they don't get their bonus until you cruise so it takes a long time recently four bonuses popped up so i got three 25 dollar bonuses and they all popped up and so somebody's cruising right now or just cruised and used my link so thank you for that 25 dollars whoever it was it doesn't tell me who it was unfortunately i wish it did but uh thank you for ever signed up and got me that 25 bucks um it's it's very much appreciated. You guys in the U.S. have so many credit card benefits. Yeah, I always feel bad for people. They So Grounded Life Cruises was talking about some card in Canada, and I can't remember the name of it, but it was like a, it was a hotel travel hacking card. Yeah, it's, all, it's like really a U.S. thing, that whole points travel hacking thing. It's really weird. Other countries don't do it, but it's such a foundation of credit cards now that like I got 165,000 points from IHG, which translates to about 17 free nights. And um, since I have the premier status actually translates, I think into like 23 nights. So I'm almost gonna get a month free of uh, stay just from signing up for that credit card. Uh, NCL Epic, you got it. You got an NCO cruise that cheap, including packages. That's you. You travel. Did you find that on Cruise Plum? You definitely. That's a definitely a good travel hack. I love NCL. NCL is a great ship. NCL is a great cruise line. If I miss, uh, what's the monthly average budget? I already answered that one. I have guided three small group tours in Cambodia, Vietnam, and Thailand in Southeast, I'm a Southeast Asian travel specialist. That's awesome. That's awesome. I definitely want to do, when I was in Laos, I did an Airbnb tour, an Airbnb food tour, and it was like one of the best tours I've ever had. When I was in Venice with my mother, we did the, Airbnb is great for their tours as well as their like booking places. We booked a food tour in Venice and it was amazing. We went to all these, like, like we went to all these like little restaurants and mom and pop like coffee shops that had like little uh, sandwiches for like that were that were from like the 14th century, 14th, 13th and 14th century. It was amazing. It was so cool. Oh, he says sending love from my home country. Awesome. I'll be in Mexico soon. Uh, LV says they do the travel points in Mexico. That's awesome. Uh, Nana says, I, I did find it on Cruise Plum, drink package, two specialties, $100 for shore excursions, inside cabin. Yeah, that really is. Uh, that really is a fan. Twelve hundred bucks for a transatlantic. Twelve. That's like, that's like a hundred dollars a day. That's all inclusive. That's really good. Normally, I don't stay all inclusive. If you would have done not all inclusive, it probably would have been probably sixty dollars a night, maybe. Uh, so that's, dude, that's amazing. That's amazing. And you got the onboard credit too. So that you cannot beat that. I will say another thing that I get the most. Um, cruise credit from being a veteran on Princess up to 250 bucks a cruise but on I will say this thing about NCL they they gave you like this coin they gave you this whole packet of like basically it was orders like if you're in the military before you know you get these orders before you go somewhere it was just a really well thought out thing I thought it was really cool I did get some I can't remember what I got like maybe a 10% discount 
on the cruise fare for being a veteran, but Princess is by far the best um, benefit. They give you the, you don't get any off the cruise, but they give you the onboard credit up to $250, um, which is really nice. I love onboard credit because it ends up paying for your internet, and I used to have a coffee addiction, pay for that. Um, if you go down to the store and buy any, like, like I bought some Q-tips, you know, it covered that, like, just covers all that. And anything I have left over, I've, I've talked about that, like, um, casino hacking. Princess lets you use your onboard credit for, at the casino. So whatever I have left boarded, on board at the end, I just go and I gamble it away. And for whatever reason, I've stayed free cruises ever since I started doing that. Uh, since I got opted into their system, I just, for whatever reason. So. Yeah, so Princess and Holland America have Antarctica cruises. They have cruises that go around the Horn uh, of South Africa, South America. Do they call it the Horn down there? I think they call it the Horn. Um, and yeah. All right. If you have any questions and I haven't asked them, please uh, please ask them again. But yeah, Nana used Cruise Plum. This is, I, I don't work for Cruise Plum. They make no money. It's the best search engine for cruising, especially if you're a solo. It's by far the best. It's so good. Because you can sort by, number one, you get the solo price that includes taxes, port fees, uh, and gratuities. And you can sort by cost per day. And that's the true cost of a cruise. You guys have heard me say that a million times. It's an amazing way to, uh, to search for cruises. Amazing way. I can't believe I've been on here almost three hours. Man, it goes by so, I've been on here 150 minutes. That's great. That tells you how much I missed you guys, although that's what I always do anyway. But I, I just love this thing. When you get free casino cruises, do you still pay all the fee and gratuity for 100% free? Yeah, you, your cruise fare is free, but you still have to pay port fees, taxes, and gratuities. Um, so it ends up being about anywhere from $35 to $50 a night. So if it's a 10-day cruise, it'll cost you anywhere from $350 to $500, although sometimes it's actually cheaper than that. Um, and to be honest with you, usually gratuities, I never, I don't pay the gratuities in advance anymore. Most of the time my onboard credit will cover them. If you're hacking the onboard credit, like I get the military onboard credit, I get, I always buy a, a um, I always buy a um, future cruise credit. I just buy 10 of them. They're a hundred dollars a piece. And with that, you get a hundred dollars off your next cruise. So you get the hundred dollars back and you get, um, and you get a, a certain amount of onboard credit, anywhere from $15 all the way up to, I think, $125. Depends on the length of your cruise. And if you own the stock of Carnival Cruise Line, you'll get anywhere from $100 to $250 credit. I used to own that and I got rid of it. But yeah, so. Oh, hello. <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, and what's the other way I get onboard credit? And then I usually pay a $200, um, you, you, you have to pay when you do the casino, you pay a $200 um, non-refundable cruise deposit, which comes off the cost of your cruise, but you get it back in onboard credit anyway. So I usually end up with like three or $400 onboard credit. So my, it usually pays for my gratuities. A lot of cruise lines, I don't think let you pay for gratuities with the onboard credit, but Princess has always seemed to just subtract it from my onboard credit. And same with uh, spending money at the casino. Even if you just go withdraw the money in the casino, like you load it up onto a machine and then you just cash out right away, I believe that's fine. I've never had an issue with doing that. I've never been charged for it, so I don't know. But uh, yeah. But yeah, when you, when you do get a casino deal, you have to pay the taxes, port fees, and gratuities. And that's anywhere from, you know, $300 to, if you're doing Panama Canal, can be as high as $700 counting the gratuities. 
because um, they're it's more expensive because they you got to pay like for the, to go through the locks and stuff like that, whatever they're charging the cruise line. So it's interesting. Yeah, future cruise credits. I always just buy as many as I, you can only, I think you can only have 10 at a time. And if you're gonna stick with the same cruise line and, and you're gonna cruise a lot, um, I think they're only good for a year. But if you're going to cruise a lot, then they're worth it. Um, I mean, if you're gonna cruise a couple times, buy two. If you're gonna cruise five times, buy five. But like right now I have five left over. I'm not gonna buy any more because I don't know how many more times I'm gonna cruise between now and I think they're good till December 2025. I think maybe they're good two years. Um, so right now I have five, but as I start cruising and, and they start falling again, then I'll just buy a couple more when I'm on board. Um, like I said, you they're a hundred bucks, but you it's a hundred dollars off your next cruise anyway, plus you get the onboard credit. So, so you end up um, getting anywhere from 15 to a hundred dollars back from it. So, or I'm sorry, 115, so $215 back from it. So your $100 you, end up, you get back anyway. So it's all those, like everyone asks me always, like how much does it cost to, cru to travel full time to cruise? You got all these little hacks that you can, when you find out about them and you start using them, work, make it su uh, supplement the cost of your travel. Just like my flights, I never pay for flights because I have, I use Chase Sapphire Reserve and I have so many cruise points, so. Do you say that onboard credits can be used to buy future cruise credit? No. Can, that's one thing you can't do is use your onboard credit. When you buy an onboard credit, they charge your credit card immediately. You put you have to put in your credit card number if you buy it with the app, or you can go down to the future cruise credit and buy it down there. But they charge your app, they charge your your credit card immediately. So you can't hack it that way. It would be cool if you could, but because then that would be like a like some kind of pyramid. It would be really cool if you could do it, but you cannot. Uh, Kat says, I have the Chase Sapphire Reserve, great for for uh, travel insurance. Yeah, can you guys see I'm getting wet? Um, yeah, the Chase Sapphire Reserve is the best travel card. Even when you listen to other people, if you can only get one card, that's the one to get. Maybe the Amex, if it makes sense for you, but the Chase Sapphire Reserve is great. And then you can pair it with other credit cards because their points are transferable into some other credit cards. Like I can transfer Chase points into the IHG, although it's not a good exchange rate. And I can I can transfer IHG points into World of Hyatt, and that's a good exchange rate. And also uh, Hilton and Marriott. So uh, it's great. I, I use most of my Chase Travel Reserve points for um, flights because you get a 50% exchange rate when you buy the flight on Chase's travel portal. So your 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 flights never. I never pay for a flight. I just booked a flight from Vancouver to Thailand, business class. It was regularly twenty seven hundred dollars, I believe, and I got it for. I had to pay taxes, so whatever taxes were, I think like I don't know, eighty bucks or something. So um, whatever the taxes were, I had to pay. But uh, so yeah, I'm flying business class to Thailand with a lie flat seat for that 14 hour flight <laughs> and it's going to be great. So, and I'm flying Eva Air, which I guess is a highly rated airline that flies out of, out of uh, Canada. I know it's, I think it's Chinese or maybe Taiwanese, but it, ha it has really good reviews and so I'm excited about it. For those that have already completed their muster station and safety video, we, uh, I want to thank you in advance for doing so. And we also have a medallion. Tina Smith, we miss up on you here too, Kevin. Oh, thank you. Starting now. Following this will be a Princess Packages presentation to explain all things packages for all inclusive cruise options. And there's something. Hi, guys, if you have. Hey, Michelle. Have How are you doing, Michelle? I haven't seen you in a while. If you uh, have any questions, throw them down there. Up 
Um, and if you're if you just stepped in Lastly, and you haven't hit the thumbs up button, we okay they moved the indoor they moved the sail away to indoors. I have uh, 180 thumbs up. I'd love to get the 200 before we leave here. That'd be amazing. So if you don't mind smashing that thumbs up, greatly appreciate it. Um, and if you have any questions, throw them out there. And uh, I'm, I'm caught up on questions. If I missed your question, it's not because I hate you. It's because I just missed it, and it's hard for me to scroll up. I look forward to getting to know each and every one of you as we share this sailing at your new home away. Cat D said she canceled the partial and went to Norway and said that's a good trade. Norway, I'd go to Norway instead of Panama. But I've done a I've done a bunch of Panama Canal cruises now, and I still have two left. Uh, still in Costa Rica. I will be back in Costa Rica soon. But uh, I am in Fort Lauderdale right now. For those that, hey, Deborah Schaub's in the house. Deborah, thanks for staying a channel member, even though I wasn't making videos. Um, Deborah's in Hawaii now and getting ready to come back. But uh, for those that don't know, I'm on a 103 day cruise. I've already done 10 days of it. I'm on the same ship. It's a varied itinerary. I'm doing about 30 days in the Caribbean and Central America. We're sometimes going into the Panama Canal, doing half of it and then coming back, and we're stopping in places like Costa Rica, um, Panama, um, places like that, and then we'll do a bunch of the Saints, St. Saint Lucia, St. Saint John's, St. Martin's, all that stuff, all the ABCs, and then we're doing a Panama Canal cruise all the way through, stopping at a bunch of Central America places, and then I'm doing a Calif or a West Coast Wine Cruise is what it's called, up the California coast, Oregon coast, Washington coast, up to Vancouver, uh, Vancouver, Canada. And then we're going over to Hawaii doing a Hawaiian cruise. And we're coming back to Vancouver and doing an Alaskan cruise. And I'll, do, I'll end up doing 21 days of Alaskan cruising. Then I'm jumping on a plane, going to Thailand, doing some dental tourism. I'm 48 years old. I go to the dentist every year, get a cleaning, but I drink a lot of coffee and tea over my life. And so I'm gonna go there and get some crowns and some veneers, and I'm gonna restore my smile to what it was when I was 20 years old. Uh, Michelle, did you just join back up? Thank you very much, I appreciate that. Um, I appreciate you joining as a channel member. Um, and I'm gonna try to expand that in the future. I just need, I need to ask the channel members like what they want and like expand that a little bit more because I don't give you guys that much. But yeah, so I'm going to Thailand and I'm gonna get uh, veneers and crowns and hopefully I don't need a root canal. I had a dental appointment like six months ago, I didn't, so hopefully, fingers crossed, I don't need anything like that. Although I got one tooth that I chipped recently, so uh, hopefully I don't need it. But, uh, and then I'm gonna start traveling. Um, I'm gonna live in a country 30 to 60 days like Vietnam, Thailand, Malaysia, Philippines, Singapore. And then at some point I'm gonna transition back over to the other side. I wanna do Iceland for a month. Um, I wanna do some places in Europe and then go to the Middle East, but I'll also be doing a lot of cruising. I'm gonna be cruising out of Singapore, mostly with Royal Caribbean, um, cause they have a ship that is home ported out of there. And it, but I'll try to catch um, the princess cruises that cruise out of Japan and maybe Australia. But yeah, super excited about it. I'm only six likes away from 200. So please like, what will make, what will make enough from YouTube, to, or will I make enough from YouTube to pay for cruises? So when I don't make videos, my the amount of money I, I make falls a lot because then it's just based on old videos, but I still make between 500 and 1,000 a month, which I think is pretty good for not making videos. When I make videos, depending on how many videos I make, I can make anywhere from $2,000 to $10,000 a month. So uh, the $10,000 is on the high end and it's usually when I'm doing van life. Van life is where I make my most money, to be honest with you. But um, uh, cruising, I can, I can get it up to the two to $5,000 range relatively easily. Not relatively easily, but it can get up to that range based on all my affiliates. So if people go and buy Moreno wool, I get a percentage of that. If people go and buy Amazon products, like the other day I did that video, five unique things I take on cruises, where I showed like my 
cool wallet that has my medallion thing in here that magnets to my phone. Um, I sold like 25 of these. Well, Amazon gives me like 15%. So I make money that way. When people go to like Chase Sapphire Reserve and get the Chase Sapphire card, when they meet the minimum requirement for points, Chase gives me points for, Chase gives me like 60,000 points, which is almost enough for like, which is enough for a, 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 um, a continental flight and almost enough for a transcontinental flight. So, um, actually it's enough for a, an overseas flight if I don't fly business class. So that's kind of how I make money that way. So it, it's gonna take me a while to build back up to that because when you stop making videos, you lose a lot of your audience. Like a lot of my videos are only getting five to, to, uh, to 7,000 views right now. Well, two to 7,000 views right now. And if I, you know, when I make videos regularly and build my audience back up, then I get 50,000 to, you know, 100,000 to sometimes millions of views. And so when I get a million, like when I get, when I start getting up to those numbers, I make a ton more money. And I start making six figures a year. So that's when it pays for my travel. So yes, YouTube can, YouTube does supplement my travel right now. Um, but uh, at the moment it doesn't pay for my travel full time, but it has in the past. Just depends on how many videos I make. So it's all up to how much I wanna work. If I, if I make a lot of videos, I'll make more money. If I do live streams like this, uh, um, I, make more, I make more money. So um, yeah. Yeah, van life does rock, fairy dust. <laughs> Have I talked to Amber? I haven't talked to her in a long time. I know she made a, uh, uh, I know she made a lot of uh, videos. I did send her a note when she lost Lily. I didn't hear for, from her then and I understood. Um, but I haven't talked to her a lot uh, because we've both been just doing our own thing, but I do need to send her a message. Cause she's doing some cool things like the tiny home thing and all that, I love that. Uh, just purchase that one in the international plug thing. Yeah, yeah. I I tried to do five unique things the other day that I hadn't seen other travelers have. Um, just to spoil it, like I'm holding this like thing that looks like a skateboard wheel, but it's really a it's really a uh, toothbrush holder, which I love it. It's this little tiny thing that keeps your toothbrush upright. I know it sounds silly, but I love it. And then uh, I put my wallet in there, um, this thing, because. One, you know, I mentioned this in the cruise, I hate having to carry three different things, a wallet, my phone, and a cruise medallion or cruise card. And this thing carries my medallion or a cruise card with this little thing. It also carries a couple credit cards, some money, and uh, my ID card. And then it also acts as a phone stand. And it just, because I have an iPhone, this is magnetic. So it just magnets on the back of it and it's pretty like on there pretty good. And so, um, that's my favorite thing I have. I can't remember what else I showed on there. I showed um, that and my the little travel thing I use that can also charge my phone and my iPad. It, it is uh, big enough, uh, has enough power that it can charge those things and I don't have to bring a separate I, iPad charger. Um, I think I showed my spray bottle and something else. I can't remember what the fifth thing was. Can you share UK Amazon links? Oh, that's interesting. I probably should do that. Um, yeah, but at a minimum, you can click on the American link and at least it'll show you the what the product is. What company did you travel abroad with? I traveled with uh, Remote Year. Uh, your, four, your three to four K a month does not not includes other costs as for example medical how is the real budget for a year no that includes that but let me preface that by saying roger i'm retired military so i have tricare for life and i pay a small fee a month for that um, and i have the chase sapphire reserve credit card which covers like all the travel insurance you need including like rental car and all that kind of stuff so I'm very fortunate that I have that, that I'm retired military, re retired U.S. military and that I have that. But if you go to like um, Grounded Life Travel, they're two Americans that travel full time and they're um, 
they talk about their insurance on there and it's about 250 a month. I don't know if that's both of them or per person, but it's about 250 a month for the, pro, for the policy they have. So go check them out. So I'm very fortunate that mine is very low cost. I pay like, I think $15 a month for my insurance premium. And I have TRICARE for life that I can convert to TRICARE Global if I decide to live somewhere full time. But to be honest with you, when I'm overseas, I just pay for medical out of my pocket. I've been in a motorcycle wreck where I needed to be taken to the hospital and have hospital care in, the, in Thailand and the total cost was 20 bucks. I had prostate cancer and I found out about that. I got a men's health exam uh, in Malaysia and it was a $170 men's health exam and they checked everything and they found my prostate cancer and I, they didn't even find that in the US. I'm cured now by the way. That's one of the reasons I went home last year uh, was to get treatment for that and get cured but I'm cured now. So don't, don't worry about that. I, it was nothing big. I actually could have lived with it for probably another 60 years, but I decided to have it removed. But um, usually I just pay out of my pocket. I'm going to get a, I'm going over to Thailand and getting a bunch of dental done, even though I have dental insurance and I got all the, the stuff that dental will cover, but now I'm going to get a bunch of cosmetic dental stuff. I'm gonna get crowns and veneers over in Thailand so I can bring back my smile from when I was 20. I mean, I have an okay smile, but it's like, it's yellowed over the years. I have some chipped teeth um, because I grind my teeth so they, they're starting to get thin. And so I'm gonna go over there and it's completely, complete vanity. And I'm gonna get crowns and veneers and restore my smile. I'm gonna do the whole thing over there uh, in Thailand and I'm gonna document it. It's a little bit of dental tourism. I thought maybe people would be interested in. And I'm gonna pay for that out of my pocket except for the dental work I already had done in the States that was covered by my dental plan that I have. So uh, medical is actually pretty cheap overseas for the most part. And uh, if you have a good travel credit card and you're like staying in Airbnbs and things like that, so then it qualifies. Um, there's good evacuation insurance and good emergency medical insurance on those. Good rental car. I've you know, wrecked a rental car before, not wrecked it, but I've gotten a fender bender in a rental car before that cost 2200 bucks. They covered it. The rental car, I've had cruise canceled and they reimbursed me on that even though the cruise line wouldn't so yeah well cruise lines have veterans discounts so um, definitely MSC and Norwegian all you got to do is just google like veterans and militaries discount and then the cruise line you want to go to and there'll be an email address to send them your DD214 and then they'll automatically have a, have a loyalty account set up with them already, give them your number, and it'll automatically be applied at checkout. With Princess, it's the same thing, but you don't get a discount off your cruises, you get onboard credit. And it's usually around $150. If you have a 14-day cruise, or, or it's around $250. So that's a lot of onboard credit, uh, especially when you stack it with a bunch of other credits. I've had as much as $800 onboard credit on Princess cruises um, and yeah and with princess you can use it for anything which is one thing I love about princess a lot of cruise lines restrict what you can use it for like only excursions only you know princess will let you use it in the casino so and that's very rare your three to 4k a month budget oh, I already answered that what is your real budget for per year, which includes everything. Yeah, my real budget per year, depends on where I'm living. When I'm living in Southeast Asia, I mean, sometimes, and I don't do it on purpose, but when I'm in Chiang Mai, a thousand to $1,500, because it's just hard to spend a lot of money there, because food's so cheap and lodging is so cheap. Um, so I would say anywhere from, I would say anywhere from 15 to 4,000 a month. And when it's four, a $4,000 a month, that means I'm living in Singapore paying $1,700 for an Airbnb. That's what that means. So it's very rare. And that includes, and even if I was paying like the grounded life travel, they pay $250 a month. Even if I had to pay $250 a month, I would still be very clo close to that, right? Um, my my $1,500 a month months would turn to $1,750 a month. My $2,000 a month months would turn to $2,250. I'm paying about $1,500 a month to live on this cruise ship. So that would be about seventeen fifty a month. So um, 
and some people I know pay way more than that. You know, they have to pay a thousand a month for um, for uh, health insurance. So I'm I feel very fortunate that I that I have that. You know, that I I did 20 years in the military, and then part of the reward for that was I got Tricare for life from them, which is very similar to Medicare, by the way. Um, although mine's through Humana, I pay. You can get the very free one, or you can pay a little bit to be able to choose your own doctor, and that's what I do. Although my, de although my deductible, I, I end up always paying about $250 a year anytime I go do anything. So I, I would have been better off sticking with the free, but I like choosing my own doctor. All right, it looks like I'm caught up. I'm running out of power on here. I love to just stay forever, but it's time for me to go back and, you know, deal with this rainy weather and just tough it out on this cruise ship and go sit and watch a, a band or something. <laughs> but yeah, I appreciate all of you that showed up today and watched this. Um, I Someone just said I'm, uh, I'm intrigued by the dental tourism in Thailand because I have a friend that recently said that she was considering it and thought, and I thought she was nuts. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of places you can go get dental work done, and most of the people are U.S. educated anyway, so you're getting U.S. educated dental people, and there's, and you can, the good thing about nowadays is you can go and look at the reviews, and there's a lot that just focus on Westerners. The place I'm going really focuses on Australians, but the thing I liked about them is they have a hotel in their dental clinic, and you can just stay in the hotel, so I'm staying in their hotel for a month, and so every day I just be able to walk over and get my dental work because I'm having a bunch of things done. And so it's going to take a little while. And so it's not all one day. It's going to be like over a few, over a couple to a few weeks because I'm going to get full uh, dental rehabilitation. So I have a Hollywood smile. Hopefully, hopefully it doesn't look ridiculous. That's what I'm worried about, that it's just going to look ridiculous, <laughs> ridiculously white. I told them like, I don't want it like white where it glows in the dark white, but yeah. Yeah, I'll definitely share that info. I can't remember the name of the dentist thing. I'd have to be able to be able to get on my email, and I can't right now. It's called like, I'm t I have a terrible memory for those that don't know. It's called like Bangkok Dental something. If you go search Bang, if you go search Bangkok Dental Tourism, you'll see like these are the top five. You'll see a bunch of them, and I think uh, yeah, the one I am going to is in there. I read all the reviews, and I just like that they have the hotel option. I hope you don't look like Wayne Newton. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, I don't want it too over the top. Are you on the boat? I'm, yeah, Cheryl, I'm on the boat. All right, I got to go because I'm going to run out of battery here. It was great seeing you all. And uh, I'll try to do one of these every week to two weeks i'll get back to it again i didn't think i'd have anybody here to be honest with you and the fact that over 100 people turned out the whole time i've been on i've pretty much had at least 100 people it's just awesome so i appreciate y'all stopping by and uh, asking all those great questions i appreciate all you channel members that joined or stayed channel members the whole time i was gone and uh, the super chats i got during this i appreciate it um, ihg is um is, so there are some major, I'll answer this question and then I'll, and I'll call it a, a live stream. I, so you know you have Hilton, right? And it includes the family of Hilton hotels. And then you have Hyatt and it includes all the family of Hyatt's, not just Hyatt's, right? You have Marriott and it includes all the Marriott. IHG is a family of hotels. There's a bunch of different ones, like I think Candlewood, um, uh, Holiday Inn, Holiday Inn Suites, and like, there's like 15 of them. And IHG is, is the, is like, when I say IHG is like saying Marriott or Hyatt or Hilton family of hotels. IHG is just a family of hotels. And the most, the one I know the most is, is um, Holiday Inn and Holiday Inn Express because they're all over the US, but they have a bunch more hotel chains. And I don't mind a Holiday Inn Express. I know some people don't like them, but nowadays they're actually pretty good. Anyway. Thanks everyone for watching and see you next video.